Peace and Black Power family. How y'all doing tonight, man? Let me get some of these links out. I see my man Garfield in the building. Powerful work my brother Garfield is doing. Powerful work, man. Yo, this is some serious stuff, man. We are we are really trying to free the minds of our people, man, from this stuff in 2020. Going into 2020, and we still believe in spookism and stuff like that, man. This is getting crazy. Y'all feel me? All right, I don't even know where to start, man. I got so much information up here, man. It's crazy, but I'm going to tell you right now, this is not a joke. This is not a laughing matter. This is serious for the hearts and minds of our people, man, because we can't be going into 2020 with the same dead, unproductive things that we have done in the past. And the same thing, we keep waiting on Jesus and God to come. Family, all of this stuff is made up. I'm going to tell you something. I was laying in my bed. I caught myself laying in my bed. I don't know. It could be, you know, too much goddamn research I've been doing. But I started thinking about not God. <laughs> All right? But I started having these. I started just looking up in the ceiling and thinking like, damn, the sun rise every day at the same time. Never late. The moon is never late. I mean, the cycle goes on every year. So I want to let y'all know something, family. I do know, and I'm going to say it right here, and don't say, oh, Sarnetta, you getting pseudo, you getting spooky on me. <laughs> I don't know. It could be too much of this research or something. But I'm going to say this, and I see uh, my brother uh, Garfield said, relax, Sarnetta, is nature at work. Okay, i give you that, nature at work. But here's the deal. I know. That there is something out there that is greater than myself. I'm going to go out and say that. I'm going to go on a limb and say that. But I'm not putting a tag on it. I'm not calling it a God. I'm not calling it a Jesus. You feel me? I'm not, I'm not giving it a title because we just don't know. Simple and plain, family. I got your back, brother. Thank you, Morpheus. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. So I was just sitting down in the bed just thinking about it like, yo, the sun rotates. It comes up every morning. It goes down the same time. Every day it does the same thing. You know, the winter come. The, I mean, I know all of that. So I know that it is something greater that does exist. But I just don't call it a God. I'm not calling it this. And he's watching over us. And he sees everything we're doing. And he's going to protect us. And he's going to make sure he provides. I'm not, I'm not doing that. That's when you become spooky. I know something formed and shaped and mold all of us. Where we got a heart. We got lungs. We got tongue. We got ears. Everything. See, you got to look at all of that. But we don't know what or who did it? Y'all feel me? We don't know. We just don't know. We can't say a God did it with a face and hands and all that. And, and Nah, we can't get spooky like that. No, Sarnetta. <laughs> okay, I don't know. I'm just throwing it out there to see what y'all say. I, that's all I'm saying. All right. So, but where, where I want to go at? Uh, where do I want to start at? Let's start right here. That bullshit that you've been told, and you need that info. info. Sonetta TV, Sonetta TV. Tune in the consciousness and watch the lies fall. Then you can let the truth flow. Sonetta TV, Sonetta TV. When you feel that melanin about 
to explode Like you feel the wind blow It's Sunnera TV Sunnera TV I know you got the truth But you can get more So you continue to grow Sunnera TV Sunnera TV Right, family, that's what's up. Let's get that out the way. Let's get that intro out the way. Um, what I do want to do is set the tone right and, and let our people see everything that's going on. First of all, we think God is real. We think God is out there. We think that there's a God that's going to protect us and save us. With all the years we went through of slavery, of hell, of being mistreated, family, I want to first share this with you and set the tone right because... If there's a God and God is what? Omniscient and omnipresent, then that means God knows all things. He's all around. He sees everything. So what is the excuse for God? And this is why God is going on trial today for murder, for treason, for being a compulsive liar. And doing all kinds of crazy things shit to our people killing people killing people's wives and telling them don't even cry act like nothing happened just just accept what i'm about to do i'm gonna kill your wife but don't even cry about it this is god god has become like bobby smurder and takashi 69 what do, what do you mean what you talking about sarnetta well, I'll tell you what I'm talking about. Takashi 6 9 Bobby Smurda, they get on wax and they talk about the murders and brag about the people that they killed on wax. Like as if nobody's going to understand it. Nobody's going to know about it. That's how God is right now. When you look at the Bible, God is just like Bobby Smurda and Takashi 6 9 He gets in his book and brags about the killings that he have committed. You see? He brags about, I created evil. Oh, no, look. Hey, I created evil. Meanwhile, our people so goddamn brain dead that they still will give all the evil to Satan. When God himself is telling you, nigga, I created evil, not the devil. The only reason why the devil is doing what he's doing is because what? God is sending his ass out there to do what he got to do. You forgot he made a bet. With the devil, God made a goddamn bet with the devil on other people's lives. We're going to show all of this. This is a fact. I'm not making none of this up. I want to let y'all know right now, we're going to show receipts. I'm not, I'm not making anything up. Whatever I say, I can back up. And God is the one that's sanctioning it. God is bragging about what he's going to do, what he's doing to our people. No, it's not slander, brother. <laughs> it's not slander. We are in the court of law right now. God ass is on trial. And I got representatives that's going to be representing God, Pastor Williams. I got uh, Brother Jeremiah Judah. And I got Black Jesus Minister. And we're going to call a couple of people up to this goddamn stand to, um, you know, they're going to come up to the stand and, and state their case. But before we do that, I want y'all to take a look at this. This is sad. This is serious. Let's take a look at this. First of all, before we do that, y'all see what that is? Omniscient. God is omniscient. Meaning what? All-knowing. God knows everything outside of time. If God is omniscient, then he already knows everything. He knows what's going to happen. He's sitting back on the throne just watching this shit go down. Check. So if you ask any Christian, Muslim, or Hebrew, or anybody, is God omniscient? They're going to tell you, hell yeah, God is omniscient. God knows everything. God is all over you. Where God at right now? He's right there beside you. You just don't see him. <laughs> don't they say that? 
Don't they say that, family? And not only is God omnipresent, but he is also what, family? Omnipresent. So if God is omnipresent, meaning God is everywhere, just like I said, he's standing right beside you right now. He's looking at you. Matter of fact, he's watching this whole live stream go down right now. If you ask any Muslim, Christian, Hebrew, Jew, Buddhist, whatever, they will all tell you that, yes, God is omnipresent. So if God is omnipresent, and if God is omniscient, meaning knows everything, knows all things outside of time and all of that, then family, answer this question. Why is God sitting back while all this is going down? In grief after hearing her eight-year-old grandson was shot and killed, leaving another child's birthday party. This really needs to stop. This doesn't make no sense. An eight-year-old child lost his life. The Broward County Sheriff's Office says Rashid Cunningham was walking along the street with other children when shots rang out. Authorities say his aunt and male cousin were also shot. The cousin is credited with shielding other children from gunfire. Thanks God that one of my nephews was here. He got shot nine times in the bike, but he saved like seven kids. All three victims were rushed to the hospital where the boy died. Now police are trying to find who is responsible while the community mourns this loss, the latest in a series of shootings in the neighborhood, which also left another person dead on Christmas. Don't live in fear. Listen to the, to the cries from those relatives. Come forward with information. So, but God is omnipresent and omniscient. What is God doing when these babies are out there on the street and they getting shot down in cold blood? In one breath, God says, I love my people. I love my children. I am the most merciful God. I am the most loving God. You seen God make work miracles where he brought children in the Bible back to life according to the scriptures? How come God is not doing that today? That's all we want to know. Hey, let's take a look at it. In 2015, 33,215 people in America were killed by guns. We got another person outside shot in the leg of female. I got people running out of the theater that are shot in the night. That averages at 91 a day. And of that daily tally, seven on average are children or teens. Very few of them make the news. I can't believe what kind of person shoots a nine-year-old boy in the face. I decided to pick a day at random and find all the youngsters who've been shot dead in a single 24-hour period. The day I chose was November the 23rd, 2013. On that particular day, 10 children and teenagers were killed by gunfire. Black, white and Latino, they fell at sleepovers, in stairwells, on street corners and even on their own doorsteps. The youngest was nine, the oldest was 19. Each one had their own story to tell. There was nine-year-old Jaden Dixon, who died in a quiet suburb of Grove City, Ohio. When he opened the door and his mother's ex-partner shot him square in the head. You could hear his mom inside screaming, that's my baby, that's my baby. It's one of the worst things I've ever been through. Tyler Dunn, who was shot dead at a sleepover in rural Michigan after his friend's dad left the boys alone for the evening with several loaded guns. Tyler was 11. And there was Justin Hinnant, aged 18, who didn't realize he had a marked man in the back of his car when a stray bullet caught him in the back of the head. This is not a story about gun control, but it is a story about what happens when you don't have gun control. Because in no other Western country would these stories be possible. Far so being so what are you trying family, to say, son, now? These shootings with are... all these killings that's going on, with all the murder that's going on with the children, with babies, with little born babies, when is God going to step in, y'all? Because y'all keep telling me when you go to church, 
You're telling these people and the, and the children that God is the most loving God, that God is going to be your protector, that God is going to be there for you from the beginning to the end. This is what you're telling us. This is what the Hebrews are telling our people. We can't do nothing without God. Without God, we done. You see, these are the lies that they tell us. In the, in the preachers, in the pastors, I'm going all in the imams. So when is God going to stop the killing from innocent little babies? They lying on God, sir. No, they're not lying on God. Nah. God is saying that he is that, that he is the most merciful. What is it like to have to bury both of my kids? Danielle New doesn't have the strength to finish the sentence. No mother could. Emotionally, it hasn't hit me yet. Emotionally, it hasn't, it hasn't hit me yet. But I know it will because I keep thinking about them. Your life changed in 19 days. January 1st, my life changed. That was the day her son, Lee, just 13 years old, was walking home from the Boys and Girls Club. The eighth grader was just a few minutes from home when he was shot 28 times. Oakland's first murder of 2014. Danielle buried her youngest. Days after the funeral, the flowers of Lee's memorial were just beginning to brown. When two blocks from home, gunfire. She ran towards it. The um, suspect stood on top of the car and just shot into the car. I just shot into the car multiple times. I see my son car shot up and I just I just broke down crying 19 year old Lamar and his first year of college killed instantly his body riddled with bullets in three weeks Danielle knew went from a mother of two to a mother of none Samuel McDonald was their cousin he's only 11 years old his mom wanted us to talk to him do you know why this happened it's because just the people who did this, they just wanted to be killing just to be killing people. In East Oakland, says Samuel's mom, there is no childhood. Church, everyone that's out here today, God. The family gathered where automatic gunfire killed Lamar. Broken glass still in the street. As the sun set, now, they walked know, down the street. This goes down all day, every day. In the city of Chicago, in the city of Brooklyn, in the city of Washington, D.C., Baltimore, Maryland, killing is going all over the place. So God is omniscient and omnipresent. God is right there sitting his ass on the damn throne. Where is God? When is he going to stop it? And when is God going to put the spirit of love over our people? Huh? Ask these goddamn Hebrews that. Ask the pastors that. Ask the ministers that. When is God going to put the spirit of love over our people? And if you, if God ain't going to do that, then the hell with some goddamn God, family. It's time for us to do it for ourselves, man. Think about that. That shit is powerful. I need y'all to think about that shit right quick. When is God? Gonna put the goddamn spirit of love. Nigga, you running around putting spirits of lies on motherfucking people. You putting spirits of delusion on people. You doing all kind of crazy maniac shit, God. But when are you gonna come and put the spirit of love over the people so that we can say, God damn, God is real? Huh? When we gonna say it? When we gonna be able to say that? God is a real God. We love God. Check. That's the question that you ask your pastor and your preacher. I don't give a damn about these sermons that you give me. All these feel good goddamn sermons up in there clapping and dancing and singing and talking all that shit on the street corner. While you talking, babies are being murdered in the hands of police, in the hands of Negroes, in the hands of the cracker. Children are dying. So how good is your God? How merciful is your God? Let me see what God say. Talk about his mercy. God talks about his mercy where? In Psalms 106.1. Praise ye the Lord. 
Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. See, his mercy is forever. And this is why his ass is on trial today for lying to our people. Taking all the goddamn money out of church. Filling up the damn pro the pastor's month pockets. Lying to the people. And God, they using you. They using your name, nigga. They using your name. <laughs> you feel me? They using your name, God. And God saw everything that he had made. Listen, y'all. God saw everything that he had made. Behold, it was very good in the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Now, I'm going to explain that to y'all to show you the hypocr hypocrisy of God. See, in one, in one breath, God tells you he repented that the Lord that he had made man on earth, right? And he grieved him at his heart. This is why you are on trial, God. In one minute, you said this. You said this, God. Before you said you repented that you made man in Genesis 131. You said everything was good. You created everything, the earth, the, the heavens, and such and such, such a time, and six days, and on the seventh day, you rested, and everything was good. But then later on, you said this. You repented that the Lord that he had made man on earth. Why would you repent? Why would you apologize? Why would you make a mistake? Why would you say you were sorry? Everything was good right here. In Genesis, you saw everything was good. So what is it, God? Was everything good or was it wrong? Because you repented now. Now you repented in Genesis 6, 6. But right here, you told us everything was good. We good body. We good. But what did you do to make a goddamn excuse? You said you repented that you have made man on earth. And what did you do? You killed everybody on the goddamn earth except for a few people. Y'all know who it is. Y'all know what I'm talking about. So that, there you go. That's the first beginning of the, the stages of God murdering people. We want to go to the beginning of the murder. <laughs> okay? That's what we want to start at. So before we keep going in, let's go. Let's go. Just after 2 a.m. in the area of 8th and Paseo, um, our victims are advising they were simply driving uh, in that area. This sister's talking about a little baby that also have been murdered. Let's get it. While God is in, believe me, on God's watch. Just after 2 a.m. in the area of 8th and Paseo, um, our victims are advising they were simply driving uh, in that area when apparently some type of gun battle was going on and their vehicle was struck uh, by a gunshot. Uh, their child, who was seated in the back seat, uh, was shot, and they quickly rushed to TMC Hospital in attempts to uh, provide uh, medical care for this child. Unfortunately, um, it was too late, and the, the child died at the hospital. It was too late on God's watch. God was right there watching this all go down. Huh? So this right here proves that there is no God out there, y'all. This right here proves that the Hebrews got a false God and they're trying to keep us enslaved with their God. I don't know who the hell they're working for, but they don't know that they are working for the white man. So let's look at the murders that God have committed. Being that he is on trial, I got to look closely because I can't see that good. But let me see. Let's look real closely, y'all. I want y'all to see this real good. And y'all could go and look it up yourself. God killed every firstborn Egyptian child. Go and check it out. Exodus 12, 29, and 30. God sent two she bears to rip apart 42 black, I mean, I ain't gonna say black, I'm gonna just say 42 boys for making fun of a prophet, bald head. This is what children do. 
Kids make fun of, they might see a retarded kid. They don't know no better. They mind is shaping and molding. You see? But what did God do? God ain't show no mercy. God ain't give a damn. But God said his mercy is enduring. Everlasting. Right? So we saw that. But look at what happens. God sent two goddamn bears to go and rip and tear these 42 children up. God killed 14,700 for what, y'all? Just for complaining about his killing. About the killing. This is in number 1649. Go and do the research. I'm giving you, re I'm giving you the goddamn receipts. Y'all can go and check it out. This is why we saying that God is a goddamn maniac. He's past the serial killers. God killed 70,000 because David had a sense that he or Satan inspired him to have. What the hell is going on? God killed 70,000 people? God slowly killed. Oh, check this out, y'all. God slowly killed David's baby boy to punish David for, adult, for adultery. Because David committed adultery, so God said, okay, I'm going to kill your children, David. This is how ruthless this God is. That's what I'm trying to show you. I want, I want y'all to see how ruthless this God is, man. God slowly killed David's baby boy to punish him for adultery. Okay? Remember the flood of Noah. These are all murders. Sodom and Gomorrah. These are all murderers. God killed 50,070 for looking into the what? The art of the Lord. <laughs> this shit is crazy. You can't, I can't make this up. You can go and look at it at 1 Samuel 6 and 19. God and Satan killed Job's children in a bet. I told y'all, go look it up. God and the devil made a goddamn bet, family. On Job's children. It's in, it's in Job, Job's 1, 18, and 19. I'm giving it to you where y'all can go and look it up. Because they made a goddamn bet. God made a bet with the devil. Who does this? Who does this type of stuff? Let's go on. Elijah kills 450 religious leaders in a prayer co contest. God kills 1 million Ethiopians. Go and look it up, 2 Chronicles 14, 9, and 14. Man, I, I don't even need to show no more. Let's go more. Yeah, let's show a little more right here. Let's show a little more. God kills Ezekiel's wife and tells him not to mourn. That's the one that really got me. All of them got me, but that shit right there, God, listen to me good, y'all. God kills Ezekiel's wife. And he tells Ezekiel, listen, early in the morning, listen, man. He sends the spirit. He sends somebody. Go over there and tell Ezekiel, listen to this crazy shit. Go over there and tell Ezekiel that I'm about to kill his wife. And I don't want Ezekiel to mourn. I don't want him to cry. I don't want him to show any goddamn emotion when I kill his wife. This is in, the, in your Bibles, y'all. Did y'all know that? How come... The pastors and all of them never talk about this. Why do y'all think they don't talk about this? Huh? Why do you think they don't talk about things like this? Because they don't want y'all to know how wicked and evil this damn God of the Bible is. We're going to get to it. Don't go nowhere. We're going to get to it. Okay. Entrapment. Jeremiah 14, 14, 15. Jeremiah 14, verse 15, I mean, verse 14 and 15. Let's look at it. And the Lord said unto me, the prophets and prophecies lies. In the name, in the name I sent them not, neither have I commanded them, neither spoke unto them. Now check this out. They prophet, they prophecy unto Unto you a false vi vision. A false vision. Now check this out. God is upset with them because they lying in God's name. They prophesize in God's name and they are lying. 
God already done taught them how to lie. So now when the prophets start lying in the name of God, God gets upset and do it. And then he do what? He kills them. I need y'all to look all of this up right here. Look it up. And we're going to bring, before we even go deep into it, because we're talking about entrapment and we got more. We talking, oh shit, damn, I thought I had more. Yeah, we're talking about entrapment, but I want to first bring to the stand, before I go on, I want to bring Pastor Bennett to the stand. Let's bring Pastor Bennett to the stand to see if he could defend any of this before we go into some of God's murders, some of God's crimes. Let's see. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. So I thought Satan was the one that brings the evil. I thought the devil was the one that do all, um, all the evil works and God is the essence of good and the devil is the essence of bad. I thought the devil was the one that do this. Does God do more evil than the devil does according to this book in this book? Does God do more evil or mm -hmm. do Satan do more evil? Which one of these powerful gods does more evil on this planet right here. Satan, what are you talking about? Show me, Mr. show Mr. me anywhere in the scriptures where Satan boasts about killing nations, where Satan boasts about killing the men and cutting off his penis and killing 42 children and all of this. Show me where Satan boasts about it because I'm quite sure I can show you where God has boasted about killing thousands and millions of people and bragged about it in his scripture i have never seen the devil or satan bragged about killing anybody in the scriptures like i said he's like bobby smurda god is just like bobby smurda he's just like takashi 69 he gets on record and he talks about the murder he talks about his crimes and don't know that it's going to come back to haunt him so just like Bobby Smurda get on record talking about his murder and the people he killed and Takashi talks about all this stuff, they forget that is the people is going to listen to this. Okay, so Sonetta, first of all, and I explained this to you yesterday when we had a brief conversation, this is the thing that you misinterpret. The scripture that you just had me go to, Isaiah 45, again, I'm showing you how you put God on trial but the, as a prosecutor, you don't do a good job of really dealing with all the information. So a defense attorney is going to come back and say this to you concerning the scripture you just brought up. I'm going to read it one more time so the people can hear it clear. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. Now, you asked me a question on yesterday. And basically, you said, can, the, can, me, can man, can humankind, can mankind create anything outside of God? I answer no. Because clearly the Bible says all things were made by God. And anything that was, and nothing was made, um, there was not, anything that was made was not made without him. So we know that God created everything. Anything that man invents or reigns forth is already from things that God has already created and made made man has never snapped their fingers and brought something out of the air that never existed right god created all things now let's deal back with choice because here is the problem that you get at if god is good or let me deal with the light first since that's what the scripture said if god is light which the bible says he is and then it says and create darkness now you don't have a problem that god formed light and darkness, you don't have a problem when you want to see something and you cut your light on, and when you want to go to sleep and you cut your light off. You don't have a problem when you go outside and it's sunny out, and then when it turns night and then it comes down and the lesser lights shine, the moon and the stars, right, and it becomes nighttime. You don't have a problem with that, but God created both of them. He created light and then he created the opposite of light, which is darkness. Had he not, then he would not have created all things. The problem that you have is just God says, I make peace. And you just skip right over that and just go to the evil. He said, I make peace and create it. So what is the interpretation that this scripture is talking about when it says, I, the Lord, do all things? He's saying, I made it all. 
I made it all. The good, I am good, right? Well, what is the opposite of good? The absence of good is bad or evil, whatever you want to say. What is darkness? It is the absence of light. Did God create evil, sir? All right, so when you called, the first thing you said was you are summoning me and you are asking questions. But there can't be no trial if a, if a prosecutor or whatever you consider yourself to be against the God and against the Bible ask the question and then don't allow whoever you want me to be to answer. Did God create evil, sir? The Bible just says it. Now, all I want to know is <clears throat> what the hell was Pastor talking about? What was he saying? What was he talking about, y'all? I didn't get it. Because I'm kept asking him one question. Did God create evil? Yes or no? Did God create evil? That's what we want to know. And if God created evil, then why the hell are we blaming Satan for everything? If God created evil, then why are we blaming the devil? God created him, right, y'all? But y'all miss it. But let's go right to it. That's one of the openings of Pastor um, Williams. But I don't want to forget this. I want to go right back to this. Look at Frank Embry for a minute, y'all. Let's take a look at Frank Embry. Frank Embry was beaten from sun up to sun down. Praying on a God that's never going to come. Praying. For a God to free him, to save him. You look at his legs. They cut this brother. They sliced him. Now, the God that we worship in, that we call it on, are the gods that these white people are. They, that's their God that we're calling on. Y'all don't know that. That's how deep this is. I want you to really take a psychological look at what's happening right now. The God, and that's why God is not coming for them. You see? Check. That's why God is not coming for them because the God that you are calling on, Frank Embry, is the God of the white man. Remember, you went into slavery under God, the good ship Jesus, check? You went in because they made that up. And so they gave that to us. And that's why the only book that we was able to read was the Bible. Not everybody, but certain people was appointed to read the scriptures to us to program that into our minds. And so they would beat Frank Embry. And look at him. Let's turn him around. Turn around, Frank. They turn, we turn Frank Embry around and you will see the whips. Can you imagine? First of all, I want you to look at his face. Look at his face. Look at the spirit in his face. Huh? Standing there saying, I know I'm going to die. Do what you will. And then they begin to beat him again and whip him all day, all night. Where's God at? Sitting on his goddamn throne, watching all this shit go down. Knowing that Frank Embry didn't do a goddamn thing to nobody. But God is omnipresent and omniscient. So he knows all things and he sees all things. Check. So he's watching all of this play out. God don't give a damn. Look at the white part of his back. You see that little piece right there? They put a corkscrew in his back and they pulled it out. That's why you see the white meat right there. And you already know what they did, family. Before they killed him, they did what? They castrated him. They cut off his penis and put it in the pickle jar so that they can put it in a store front window as a souvenir or they would give it to their daughters as a souvenir. Y'all don't believe me. Y'all don't believe me. There you go right there. Frank Embry. How come he don't got a rag around him right here? How come he don't got like a, a cloth around him right here? How come he don't got the cloth around him right here? But now you see they got the cloth around him. Because that's when they killed him. And that's when they hung him. And God seen that they was getting ready to cut off his phallic symbol. And God allowed it to go down. Right? Check. Check. Let's move on. 
Look at it. Look at them arrows right there, y'all. We got two brothers. Really, it was three. One of them got away. One of them said, it was a white woman that said, they was not the one that raped me. And they let Cameron go. That was his name. You can go and look it up. His name was Cameron. And they let Cameron go after they killed two of, the, of his friends. They killed him. Check. Look at the sheet. Look at the arrow. I want y'all to focus on the arrow right quick in court. We're in court. Focus on the arrow. The top arrow is pointing at his chest. That's where they stuck a crowbar through his chest, y'all. Check. And they was praying on God to help him. God never came. Even though God is standing right beside him, God never raised the finger to save him. And then you see the other arrow down below pointing at the sheet right in the middle part where his phallic symbol is at. You see the blood coming through the sheet because you already know what they did. They castrated him. They cut off his penis. Look at the white man pointing up, showing you, yeah, we did this to the nigga. They calling on our God. They don't know that that's our God. He's with us. That God is with us. You calling on Jesus, but Jesus not coming because Jesus is with us. So let's go on. Omni present and omni sent, right? Okay, God. Let's look at the first picture first. To the left. We see the arrow pointing right down to the phallic symbol. You notice his pants is hanging off his butt. Why? Because the white man had penis envy. They was all penis envy of us. And so they would cut off his penis and give it to their daughters or they would put it in jaws and keep it as silver nears. They was chopping off our ears, chopping off our eye, cutting off our eyeballs, taking our eyeballs out of the socket. The next picture right across from there, you see one, two, three, four girls standing around Stacy, Reuben Stacy. That's his name. Go and look it up. His name is Reuben Stacy. And they are standing around Reuben Stacy, smiling and beguiling because they know, the white girls know, that he is getting ready to get his penis cut off. And one of them is going to end up with the ultimate prize, which is the black man penis. I'm not, hey, that's real talk. You can go and look it up for yourself. All of this is happening, but there's no God coming. Why is not the God coming? Because it's not real. This is what we're trying to show you today. That we are in this war for ourselves. We got to defend for ourselves. There's no God coming. Don't listen to these dressed up niggas and they got them curtain, shower curtain, and you think they, they talking about some God. They trying to manipulate you and keep you in control of this goddamn white man. They liars. They know there's no God that's going to come and save you. Them niggas are liars. Let's look at it. You got three of them really hanging on the, um, on the pole. It's one hanging upside down so you don't see him because he's behind them. But there's another one laying on the ground. And they were so arrogant enough to take the pictures as though we would never get up and see this again. Look at how they gang bang the brother. He's laying down on the ground. There's no God coming to save you. You got to save yourself. See? Some of them didn't fight because they were programmed that God was going to come help them. Can you imagine telling and, and our people knowing that there's no such thing as a God, that we would have stood up and fought for ourselves, that we've been programmed to believe that God was coming. That's why you hear us singing all of them goddamn spiritual songs. Jack. Because we believed in God. We believed that he would come and save us and free us. And even when we did get free physically, guess what we did so stupidly? We gave the credit to who, y'all? Who we gave the credit to? We still gave the credit to God. God did save us. God freed us after 400 years. 
And look at the hell that we are in right now, y'all. We still say God gave us that freedom. Damn. Let's go on. You see that you see that hand right there that that yellow hand pointing. Look at the yellow hand pointing. You see the body in the middle? His name is Jesse Washington. Jesse Washington was beat beaten bad by over 500,000 white men, women and children came out to burn that black man alive. All the while he was getting gang banged and beat up and you already know See, this is what y'all don't know. He was also being raped. He was being sodomized. He was getting raped in the hands of the white man. They took his manhood, y'all. Y'all think the black woman was the only one being raped. No. I'm sorry to tell you. No. The black, and matter of fact, they prefer to rape the black man first. Because that was their that was their sexual preference was the black man. Check. I know y'all don't believe me. Y'all say son, get the hell out of here. You crazy. You lying now, son. No, I'm not lying. They wanted the black man. They wanted to rape him. They wanted to just bring him down to the lowest state that they can. This is where they get the term picnic from. Pick undigger. And so they picked Jesse Washington. And when they finished beating him, they didn't put a rope around his neck. They put a chain around his neck. Why the chain? Because they know when we burn this nigga, the rope is not gonna the rope is gonna pop. But if we get the chain and hang him by the chain, the chain is not gonna pop. All the while, Jesse Washington is calling and begging and pleading for God to come and help him. God is not there. But God is omnipresent and omniscient. I want to keep on letting y'all know that. Omniscient, meaning all-knowing. God knows everything that's going down before it happened. Ask any preacher, ask any reverend, ask him that. And if it's true that God is omniscient and he knows everything that's going down, then God, why didn't you prevent it? Why didn't you stop it, God? Huh? Omnipresent. Meaning everywhere. God is everywhere. So you can't say, oh, God ain't know about it at that time. This is this, these are the attributes that you give God. Damn. Damn. So if God is omnipresent, omniscient, then he's right there while they doing it. God is acting in concert. In fact, he is, the, he is or she is the chief killer amongst all of them he or she is the one that's organizing this goddamn killing and letting it go down right and so when they get tired and and you know ready to go home of beating J jesse washington they said we need to burn him now and let's hang him up so that we can drive fear into black people. Let's leave his ass up here. So when they see this, it will automatically drive fear into the black woman and touch the seed of the black woman. And this is why a lot of the babies was born in fear. You see? They would make nine-month pregnant women step up and watch this. They would bring them up to the forefront and make them watch this while they was pregnant. It was important for them. See, they knew that much, science, that it was important for them to bring forth the pregnant women to make them watch this because the adrenaline of fear would automatically go into the womb of the black woman and touch the seed of the black woman. Even if that child was a man, the child would what? Come out fearful. The child will what? Come out already knowing what he got to do. The child will what? Already come out program talking about this goddamn Bible. It was never meant for us to carry this Bible into this year right here. Into the years beyond. After coming out of slavery, we should have been burnt that shit. But it stuck into our subconsciousness. 
And so now they hung the brother up after they finished killing him. But I guarantee you, this is why you see a towel wrapped around his waist. Because before they burnt him alive, they don't want to kill and destroy the penis. They got to cut that off first. We don't want to destroy the penis. We need to cut the penis off, preserve the penis, put it in the pickle jar, and let's save this and, and so we can let our people show it. They were sending out postcards, family. They were sending postcards all over the world, letting the people know there's going to be a barbecue. There's going to be a picnic. That's where it come from. Yeah, in the word motherfucker also comes from slavery. They would make the father, they would make the man, they would make the child lay down and have sex with the woman. All they cared about was to produce a baby. We don't give a damn if that's your mother. Lay down and have sex with a nigga. Give us a strong black buck. We need a strong black buck. And Harriet Tubman. And a few of them would walk around and say, that's a motherfucker. Which means what? He had sex with his mother. It wasn't used as a profane curse word at that time. It was to describe an action. That's all it was. It was to describe an action. He's a motherfucker. He produced a baby with his own mother. And they wasn't clowning him for that. They were showing what the white man has done to him. What, what they made him do. Y'all remember Fannie Lou Hamer? What they did to Fannie Lou Hamer? When two black men got caught and they beat them up and brought them into the prison, what did they do? They told these niggas, these were children born out of fear. They told him, we want you to go up in that cell and beat the living shit out of Fannie Lou Hamer because she is causing trouble. What trouble was she causing? Bringing light onto what was going on of the racist. And these two so-called niggas, I ain't going to say brothers, went in there and beat Fannie Lou Hamer with sticks, with night sticks, and beat her so bad, family. Y'all go, y'all go and look up Fannie Lou Hamer and see what that strong black woman have represented for us and have done for us. Go and look it up. Born out of slavery. Oh, look at this right here. Where's God? Where you at, God? Because they've been praying for you. For 500 years, and we still praying today, God. Where you at? That's why your ass is on trial today. Where you at, God? This man, Will Brown, that's his name. His name is Will Brown. I remember, I don't know where the picture is. I've been looking all over for his picture before they burned him alive because I wanted y'all to see how he looked. I got a real good picture, but... I don't know where the hell that shit is at. I went on three computers, couldn't find it. I'm like, oh, God damn. I know I got it somewhere stored, but I got the picture. His name is Will Brown. Go and look it up in Illinois, Chicago, Illinois. That's where this happened at. In Illinois, 1919. Go and look it up. They clam the prison walls to get him out of there. He was accused of raping, and you know they always say raping a white woman, which he never did. And so they would scale the walls to get him out of prison. They broke him out of prison. Took over the goddamn prison system. Go and look it up. His name is Will Brown, 1919, in Illinois. It happened. And they drug him out of prison. Young boy. Young brother. I think he was like 19, 20, around there. Shot him. I'm going to say it again. Shot him over a thousand times. Did you hear me? Y'all didn't hear me. Shot him over a thousand times. Not 41 shots. Not 52 shots that we see the police doing today to us. But they riddled his body with bullets. Shot him over a thousand times. And burnt him alive. You already know. They castrated him. They took off his penis first to preserve it. You know what they did to him. Check. His name is Will Brown. Go and look it up. He been praying to God. Praying that day they won't do it. But God sat back on his throne looking at it.
probably eating chips, drinking Pepsi or sodas and all this shit while this shit was going down. And family, not only was they getting the brothers, but yeah, they was killing our women. Yes, they was killing our women, hanging them off of bridges. I got another picture. I'm so, oh, man, I'm sorry I didn't load it up, but I got a picture of Laura Nelson, close-up picture. You see the sister right there hanging off the bridge on the right, and her son is right beside her on the left. And you notice, oh, man, if y'all could only blow it up, I should have, oh, damn, I should have blew this up for y'all. The son, his pants is beneath his ankles, y'all. What do you think they did to the son? His son, the, her son was only 14 years old. Laura Nelson, go and look it up in the book of Sanctuary. He was only 14 years old. They castrated him. Hung them from the bridge. You know why they hung the woman? I'll tell you the story. They hung Laura Nelson because she was trying to save her son. Her son was working from sun up to sun down for the white man. And when it came time to pay him, the white man didn't pay him. So he went home with no money. Mama hungry. The other, his other siblings are hungry. So he decided to go to the store. Check this out. To steal some food to eat. He got caught stealing. Don't believe a goddamn word I'm telling you. Go and look it up for yourself. Get the book without sanctuary. Go type it up. Type in Laura Nelson. Google it, goddammit. And read it for yourself. I got it. Over there. I don't want to get it, though. I got it. It's over there. I can get it. The book. And show it to you. Y'all want me to get it? I run over there and get it. I can run over there and get it. Let me see. All right, let's see if I got it here. I hope I got it here. It's in one of my files here. No, I don't got it. I got the wrong paper. <laughs> my bad, y'all. I have it the next time I come up in here. There, my bad. I grabbed the wrong book. But yes, Laura Nelson. You can go and look it up for yourself. Hanging off the bridge. She was also married. You'll see her marriage thing. You can see her wedding ring on her finger. And that's her son, 14 years old. And that's why they killed him. Because he wanted to, he tried to get his mother something to eat. And she tried to stop them from killing her son. You know a mother going to go all out. And ultimately they did the same thing to the mother, y'all. God is nowhere around. God is not trying to help nobody. See? So what I'm showing you is, There is no God coming to save you, family. There is nobody coming to save you. Stop letting these niggas preach to you with this bullshit, with this false doctrine. They doing the slave master's work and don't even know it. So what I would like to do right now is before we do anything else, is bring our beloved brother, <laughs> Garfield, to the stand. No, I bring Unk to the stand. Let's bring Unk to the stand, y'all. I said I would charge him with wholesale murder of all the human beings on planet Earth because he would have the power to make sure that everybody lives forever. 
peacefully and without no harm coming to them ever. So I would charge them with not giving people the ability to live forever. That's first of all. Second point, I would charge them with having all the power in the universe and actually not using it, sitting back, allowing crazy people to dominate other people based off their ability not to protect themselves. Talking about people like the babies. So let me get this uh, straight. Hold on. Hold, a on. hold on. Hold on. Hold on. You said so that you're going to charge all the power. God. Let's get this straight. Let's see what you're saying. I want you to start that over again for me, brother. I said I would charge him with wholesale murder of all the human beings on planet Earth because he would have the power to make sure that everybody lives forever, peacefully, and without no harm coming to him ever. So I would charge him with not giving people the ability to live forever. That's first of all. Second point, I would charge him with having all the power in the universe and actually not using it, sitting back, allowing crazy people to dominate other people based off their ability not to protect themselves. We're talking about people like the babies of uh, other countries, just period. So he's sitting back with all the power, right, and not actually using it to the benefit of humanity. <clears throat> That's another charge I would give. Plain and simple. And I can't put, I can't get it straight in my mind. Why that little babies who don't got nothing to do with nothing, you know what I'm saying, have to suffer like that? Why do people without anything have to suffer? I can't get that in my mind. But God seems to always make bad choices, right? So, so God actually chooses to make a devil that controls our mind. You know, why, why would all knowing God do that? It, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense right up to the point where you think about it like this. It's not God doing none of that. Because God is really coming out of the minds of men and women. It, it, it's people, human beings, filling in the gaps of things they do not understand. We call it the God of the gaps. So when human beings have reached a level of their particular knowledge in that particular time period, right, since they don't have an answer for it, they'll fill in. They'll put in the place where they don't know God. So if you didn't understand what a volcano was, you would say that God was mad and killed the people when it exploded. So if you didn't understand what DNA was and how babies came, you would fill in the gaps with that. So when man always reaches his level of knowledge, he always puts in the God of the gaps. So really, we talk about human beings and they mind what they think God would be. That's the human mind that would say, well, God created a flood and killed the whole earth. Right. So mm -hmm. we know they didn't kill the whole earth because the Hebrews never knew about the whole earth. Well, well if God did that, then, then, then that's an illogical God. And I'm pretty sure Saul said this. God never solves any problems. Mm. Like you got all the power and don't solve no problems. Read the Bible. The Hebrews never won. <laughs> right, right. You know what I'm saying? They, they never won. So, so then why would you follow that God? It never helped you defeat nobody. They always lost. So I'm saying that's confusing. God don't solve no problems. Right now, today, people are starving. We got global warming. God's not going to solve that. It's going to be unsolved human beings collectively getting together to solve those problems. So, I mean, I'm charged with having all the power and not fixing shit. All right. Thank you, brother. Now, that was a good point with my brother Unk. Unk, that was Unk. Thank you for taking a stand. Unk, you can step down now, brother. I appreciate that. Um, that was a good point. Why is it that you never see God solving any of our problems? The whole point of what's going on here, family, is to show you that there is nobody outside of yourself that is going to do what you're supposed to do for yourself. You got to do it. Stop listening to these niggas dressed up in their costumes. It sounds good. But history should be our teacher. History should be our teacher. We see what happened in history. We see God ain't never came for them people dealing with 400 years of slavery. God was never there. God allowed sitting on the goddamn throne because one thing we can establish... One thing that we all can establish, that God is omniscient. <laughs> you see, we ain't going to let them off the hook with this one. We are not going to let them off the hook with this one. If God is omniscient, meaning all-knowing, God knows everything, y'all. He knows what's going down before it go down. So if God is omniscient, he knows everything outside of time. God damn it. 
So if he knows everything going outside of time and he's omnipresent, meaning everywhere, then why are y'all still letting this nigga off the hook? Why are we still allowing these preachers to tell us this shit? It's like we become so dumb and stupid. Like we don't, we don't want to hear nothing no more. Anything that don't make sense, we'll just automatically uh, uh, go with it because it may sound good. And we just go along with it because it sounds good. Oh, yeah, we got to fear God. See, the problem is these niggas fear God. They don't love him. The pastors, the preachers, the, the so-called um, Hebrews, the Christians, they are, we are moving in fear and not common sense. Because if we was moving in common sense, why do you think we still ain't owning nothing yet? Why we ain't running nothing yet? We the first people of the goddamn planet Earth. We run around bragging about we the kings and queens of the planet. And look at us. Look at the kings and queens today, y'all. And look at the Mexicans coming in, taking over. Look at the Dominicans and the Spanish people. Look at the Africans coming in, building. What do we got, y'all? Nothing. We patronize the world because... We don't understand yet that we are the ones with the power. What happens is we give that power away willfully to what? Unknown gods that don't exist. We give it away. Not knowing that we have the power to every goddamn thing. The city don't move unless we move. Nothing move unless we say so. Y'all got to understand that. Y'all don't know that yet. Nothing moves unless the black man and woman say, yo, let's make this move. Huh? So everybody comes here because they know that they are feeding off of our ignorance, black man and woman. Understand that. As long as we got this goddamn stupid ass damn Harry Potter Bible, we ain't going nowhere with it. We ain't going nowhere. We're going to keep on killing each other. We're going to keep on murdering each other. Because we don't have no faith in ourselves, We don't have no belief in ourselves. We don't know that we are the gods on this goddamn planet that we can do. Be and it is. We say, come fire coal. God damn it. If we say be and it is, it's going to be. Because it comes with the action. Not no spook is going to do it. We're going to do it. Check. Oh, man. Y'all don't hear me, man. I, I, I got to get on this pulpit, man. Where you at, Pastor, Pastor Williams? <laughs> I got to get on the pulpit because y'all playing games with the hearts and minds of our people. And I'm not going to let you do it. I'm not going to let you do it. So what I want y'all to understand is that if God would deceive his own prophets, what the hell you think he would do to us? And if the prophet be deceived when, when he has spoken a thing, I, and he brags about it, y'all, I, the Lord, have deceived the prophet. You see, that's what I mean by God being just like Bobby Smyrta. He's saying it on wax. The wax is the Bible. <laughs> you see, Bobby Smyrta, Takashi 6 9 and these rappers, they brag about their power and what they have done to people on, on the wax. God do the same thing. God been doing this first. He brag about what he have done to the people because he know you're stupid. He know y'all don't believe. He know you fear him. That was the purpose. That was the white man's purpose is to get you to fear God. To question God. So I can't fear him and I don't want to question him. Because if I fear God, then I ain't got to worry about these niggas. What did they say, Carter G. Wilson? You don't have to worry about a man's thinking. It's already in his heart. I don't have to worry about him. He going to do what he got to do. Submit. Bow down. God himself is letting you know. Lying to the people. Telling you that I have deceived the prophet. And the prophet is already. 
Now, if God will deceive the prophet, you know I told you, he damn sure don't give a damn about you. He deceiving his own prophet. So you don't think he would deceive the people? Shit. Jeremiah told you in 410, then said, I, ha, Lord God, surely thou has greatly deceived this people. He deceived the people in Jerusalem, saying, ye shall have peace, whereas the sword reaches unto the soul. So God is letting you know that, nigga, I will deceive not only the prophet, but I will deceive the people too. But I thought this was a righteous God. I thought that the devil was the devil and he supposed to be the diabolical and he supposed to be the, the satanic shit. He supposed to be doing all of that. Why is God doing what the devil supposed to do? Huh? <laughs> do, do anybody got any answers? I got an answer for it. Because God and the devil are what? The same goddamn thing. That's why. God and the devil are the same. Let's go on and see what else God does. He posed, he, this is what the devil supposed to be doing. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusions that they shall believe a lie. God damn right there. Order in the court, baby. I know y'all going crazy. <laughs> God is sending lies. God telling the motherfuckers, yo, go out there and lie. When he teaches you, you're not supposed to be lying. But, you know, you would have a dumb Christian and you would have a stupid Hebrew somewhere and then you would have a dumb pastor say, oh, no, you got to, you got to, they would make all kind of excuses for God. Well, you got to read the whole context and see why God sent the lie. See why God is telling you to, to believe in this type of family. Stop it. You sound stupid. Nowhere in the world God should be condoning lies. Saw so you lied. How did I lie? Come on, Hebrew. How did I lie? I'm giving you the scripture. Go to um, 2 Thessalonians 2 and 11. They said, I lied, y'all. Prove me to be a liar. I'm giving you the receipts. 2 Thessalonians 2 and 11. They said, I'm lying. God said, and for this cause, God shall send them strong delusions that they shall believe a lie. But now, see, they so fearful of this God thing that they say, I'm lying, even though I'm telling them where you can go and look it up in the scriptures. I'm showing you where y'all can go and look it up at. <laughs> y'all crazy as hell. But everything, think about this, y'all. Everything that God tells us what the devil does, God does it too. Because they are both the same. Think about it. God lie. God murders. He kills children. He kills people that's not even born yet in the womb. Huh? He kills. He murders. He destroys. He kills nations. I'm going to ask you all a question. Show me in the Bible where Satan is bragging about the people that he killed. I'll wait. That's one of the questions that I have asked one of the representatives of God. Show me where Satan is in the Bible bragging about the people that he have killed. Oh, shit. I'll wait. I can show you all through the goddamn Bible where God is bragging about the people he murdered, the people he killed, because he want to keep, he want to intimidate the people. He want to keep fear on you. If you do this, God going to get you. God going to kill you. You see? Show me. Show me where God is talking about. I killed this nigga here. <laughs> Show me. See, I can't. Because whoever God, whoever Satan killed, y'all ready for this? God sent them on a mission and told them to kill. That's a fact. Anybody remember God and the devil made a bet. We're going to get to some of that. Let's get to some more testimony before I go into this. Who do I want to bring to the stand now? 
uh, let's get these little young ones out the way. Um, the older elder G's. Let's bring um Professor Jane Smalls to the stand. Professor Jane Smalls, you are you have been called down, brother, to court. I, I call Professor Jane Smalls to the witness stand, sir, and talk to us about this guard. Genocide against the black world. Genocide against the black world. Hmm, how, how is that? Everybody that proclaimed they've fallen Allah or Jehovah or Jesus been killing black folks since they've begun. Stealing our land, raping our women, murdering us at will across the world. Mm. That's been the basis of wealth for their religion, which has been the basis of wealth for their society. Okay. The only real relationship we've had with any of those three religions was to respond to the invasion, the occupation, the genocide, the rape, the stealing of our land and our resources. That's our relationship. And then smothering us in conversion to become zombies to their dead theology. Mm. No, that's the real deal. The only real relationship we've had with Christendom is with them declaring war on us and committing genocide against us. The only real relationship we've had with those whites who call themselves Jews is them declaring war on us in partnership with the Muslims and the Christians and committing genocide and stealing our resources mm. and occupying our land. So that, that's, the only, you know, that's that. Oh, okay, okay. But our, our God kicked their God ass any day of the week. <laughs> and then another, in another 500 years, there won't be no white people. Right. Right. Period. They okay. Won't exist. All right. Um, I want to bring right down to the stand from here. Um, I want to keep on. I want. I would like to bring um, one of God representatives to the stand. Uh, Pastor Bennett, I would like to bring you down, and uh, because you are representing God, and so let us hear what you got to say about all these charges. That God is coming down with. Let me remind you, you are under oath under the King James Bible, sir. <laughs> so let me ask you, um, in the book of Ezekiel 14 and 9, is it true that if the prophet be deceived when he has spoken a thing, I, the Lord God, has deceived the prophets? Is it true that God is deceiving people, putting lying spirits on people, sending a great delusion of lies and casting out all kind of evil spells on people, sir. Is that true? Let me remind you, you are under oath under the King James Bible, sir. <laughs> yes, it is true that God can allow a lying spirit to overtake. No, no, I didn't, I didn't ask you can. I said, is it true that he has done that, sir? That he has committed uh, these crimes, sir? So, no, I won't, if you call it crimes, of course I ain't going to agree with you, Sarnetta. If you call it allowed, then yes, he allowed. So, he let allowed me ask you a question, question, sir. Being that you're a pastor, if you go out and you're lying all through the church and you deceiving people, is that a crime, sir, against God? Would you say that's Absolutely. a crime against the people? Absolutely. So is it all right for God to go ahead and do it and lie to the people after he teaches us that thou should not kill, thou should not lie? Is that all right for God to do, sir? Yes, yeah, so that's where you would have to understand the context. God never lied. God never, um, in the same sense as when God says, thou shalt not kill, because that's the same the reason you have to gain context, because you can also find scriptures where God does allow for, for death, and God does allow for killing. So the thou shalt not kill is not a time to be from Never be from death, never being able to occur through someone. Let me remind you, you are under life. oath under so the you have King to understand James the Bible, context. Sir. And then again, what you always do wrong side is you always put God on a human level. God is not a man, He is not human, He is sovereign. We don't, we don't look at Him or deal with Him from an aspect of He committed a crime because He did something He told us not to do. We don't look at it the same as I go out and I lie to Sarnetta. Sarnetta says, Hey, um. Are you coming up this week? I know I ain't coming up. Yeah, I'm going to be there tomorrow. Sir, I know I ain't sir, coming. can you turn to the book of Ezekiel 14 and 9? It's clearly stating that I, the Lord God, have deceived the prophets. What does the word deceive mean, sir? I'm going to go there in just a second, sir. 
Ezekiel 14 and 9. Okay. And if a prophet be deceived, when he has spoken a thing, I, the Lord, have deceived that prophet, and I will stretch out my hand upon him and will destroy him from the You're going the on. You're going my... on with more. I just said 14 and 9, sir. That's the, that's, I'm sorry, I don't know what you're reading. That's the whole verse. Verse nine. Right. So, so what you see there, what you see there, sir, is that um, God is letting you know straight up that He has deceived the prophet. God is saying He deceived the prophet. Is that a good thing or a bad thing, sir, for God to do when God tell us not to be deceiving, when God tell us not to cast lies and not to lie on each other and to treat each other with love and respect, but God sends. Lies and spirits of all kind of illusions, brother. Nah, Sai, you, you got it wrong, bro. You I got, got it wrong. wrong. You just hey. read it when God said, <laughs> I, the Lord God, has deceived the prophet. Sir. How can I get it wrong when he told on himself? I'm only repeating what God said. Okay, so here's why. Here's why you get it wrong. Because you do what most people do who want to criticize the Bible. You take one scripture and you determine your context, what you want to be for that. Scripture. Let me remind you, you, don't you are under oath under the, you under you the King James Bible, that, sir. It is very, it might be very well that you are absolutely misrepresenting the context and misrepresenting God, what God is stating. First of all, if you look at verse, just start at verse six, <clears throat> it says, therefore, tell the house of Israel that this is what the Lord God said, repent. And turn away from your idols. So first you would have to start at a place where the people who are talking to and what you are under with, oath that under the King James Bible, sir. But they're already in a place of ungodliness. They are serving idols, not God. And he says, tell them, repent and turn away from idols. Turn your face, turn your faces away from all your abominations. So secondly, that would tell you not God, but the people are doing abominable things, serving idols, right? For when any Israelite or any foreigner dwelling in Israel separates himself from me, sets up idols in his heart, and puts a wicked stumbling block before his face, and then comes to the prophet to inquire of me, I, the Lord, will answer him myself. I will set my face against that man and make him a sign and a proverb. Let me I remind you, you are under oath under the King people. James Bible. Then you sir. will know that I am the Lord. But if, but if the prophet is enticed to speak a message, then it was the Lord. Now, if you look at the context or even verse 10 after, they will bear their punishment. The punishment of the inquirer will be the same as of that prophet in order that the house of Israel may no longer stray from me and no longer defile themselves with all their sin. They that will be my people, and I will be their God, because Lord. Now, here's the thing that I would say to you, Sai. What, what you have a problem with is you have a problem with how God chooses to judge his people. But it's not for you to choose that. If you have a problem and, can't, and refuse to recognize that God is, in, the, in this situation at least, and in the ones you talked about, the delusion, which we could go there too and show you, God is responding to the wickedness of his people. He is responding to the sin of his people. God is not the one committing abomination. God is not the one sinning. He is responding to the sin of his people. Let me remind and you, you, you are under the oath under the King people. James Bible. You don't even believe in this God. You don't even care about this God. You think this God don't even exist. Yet you try him as if he truly exists. Okay, Pastor Bennett, you are under oath and you have committed perjury because I have shown you where God himself is telling on himself. But you, Pastor Bennett, will still say that God has not done these things. But you can look at the proof and the evidence is right there in the book of Ezekiel 14 and 9. And if the prophet be deceived when he has spoken a thing, I, the Lord God, I, the Lord, have deceived the prophet, Pastor Bennett. I don't understand. Because you have been taught to fear God, you don't want to, I, I understand. You don't want to snitch. You don't want to snitch on God. 
But God damn it, God is telling on himself. So it's not a snitch if you say, yeah, well, you know what? Yes, in the book of Ezekiel 14, God did deceive this prophet. But you are all up in here committing perjury, Pastor Bennett. Come on, man. I'm going to give you a break on this. I'm not going to send you straight to jail on this, Pastor Bennett. I'm going to give you another chance. But before we do that, I would like to bring on uh, my brother Garfield. I would like to bring on Garfield for his um, testimony. I think, I, I think I'm going to call you about three times, Garfield. So don't go nowhere when you finish. But I definitely need you for this trial here, sir. Brother Garfield Dagger Squad. All right, hold up, hold up. Do y'all do y'all hear Garfield? Yes or no? No sound? Sound? Ah oh, man, Garfield. No sound on this one, man. Damn. Hold up, man. I just heard the joint. And we did it a few times. All right. Damn, man. I mean, damn, me and Garfield had problems with his um, testimony. I might have to call Garfield and get his testimony in here. But I'll just go right to Professor Griff. A quick, a quick snippet of my brother, Professor Griff. We call Professor Griff to the stand to make a quick testimony. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be accusatory to God, but I'd be very curious as to why we ended up in slavery and getting the punishment that we're, that we're receiving. Hold on, hold on, Griff. You're saying that you're not going to be accusatory to God. Are you afraid to accuse God of not doing what he posed to do, but you're going to say, you still say you want to question him. So what do you mean by that? Explain that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be accusatory to God, but I'd be very curious as to why we ended up in slavery and getting the punishment that we're, that we're receiving. Why us? You understand what I'm saying? Yes. I wouldn't accuse God of anything, but I would say, God, can I have this conversation with you? Um, you know, why slavery, man? Why rob us of every damn thing? Why you would let these people bring us down to the level of animals to the point where we don't even recognize who we are? You understand what I'm mm. saying? Why? Yes. You know, and, then, and then what the hell we got to do to get back to our original selves, man? That's it, man. But you know, you can call me anytime, son. That I got you, bro. Yes, sir. My brother. All right. Peace. Peace. All right. So a lot of people, that's what a lot of people ask, man. Like, yo, why slavery, God? Why you allowed us to go down? Why you allowed the castration of our people, God? That's what we want to know. So uh, we got Pastor Williams, who have just been warned not to step up in here into court and to perjure himself. To do it again, Pastor Williams. I will remove you from the court. I will strictly, I will just remove you from the court. I will not give you time because I know you got children out there. I know you got a family and a wife that you got to take care of. I will just remove you from the court. Okay? So um, we're going to move on. I want to know why in the hell is Jesus walking around with gang tattoos? Let's start there, God. Why are you allowing your son, Jesus, to walk around with gang tattoos on his penis, on his testicles? This is crazy, God. This is crazy. So this is where all the gang tattoos started from. Hebrews say, and I heard them say many times, that you're not supposed to get tattoos. Why are y'all getting tattoos on your body? 
But God damn it, if the commander in chief got a tattoo, then why are you out there worrying about the brothers and sisters that got tattoos on their body when your commander in chief, Jesus Christ, is putting a goddamn tattoo on his damn penis? His testicles. We already know what thigh is now today. We understand what thigh means and what thigh is. Jesus is walking around town with a tattoo on his penis that says King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And I bring the receipts. You can look it up. Revelation 1916. Go and do the research yourself. Everything that we bring here, we show you that this is not no lie. Jesus is the first one to get a tattoo on his body. And where does he choose to put the tattoo? On his goddamn penis. Come on, Jesus. Talk back to me. We want to know. Let me go to, uh, let me see if this one work here. Garfield. I'm looking for you, Garfield. Because you're the one that brought this out. And I want to see what you got to say about this. Let me look for you, Garfield. I don't know if this one's going to work. I hope this one work, but let's see if this one works. Here's a scripture. Okay, this one works. <laughs> All right. So I would like to bring Garfield back to the stand, family. I want to call on Garfield. Because he talked about Jesus putting a tattoo on his testicles, on his penis. So, Garfield, can you please take the stand, sir? Thank you. There's a scripture in Revelation where Jesus has something written on his testicles. Oh. Now, you may say, what? What are you talking about, Garfield? Revelation 19, verses 16 and he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written King of Kings and Lord of Lords in Revelation 19.16. What is a Garfield? It says thigh. But since thigh is a biblical euphemism for testicles, because yes. you know from you know from um Genesis 24.2 and 24.9 and Genesis 47, we know that the word thigh is a biblical. Order, order in the court, Garfield. Order in the damn court. Are you, are you slandering Jesus, Garfield? You said thigh. But I do know thigh in the biblical term means genitals. Genitals means the penis. That's a euphemism word that they use nicely because they don't want to say penis. So it is thigh. We did do the research on that. I want you to know we went in the back court, Garfield, and we did the research, and we find out we found out that the word thigh, meaning genitals, so the testicles. So you are right. So um, let me hear this again, Garfield, before I proceed on, sir. Here's a scripture in Revelation where Jesus has something written on his testicles. Now you may say, what? What are you talking about, Garfield? Revelations 19, verses 16, and he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords, in Revelation 19, 16. What is it, Garfield? It says thigh. But since thigh is a biblical euphemism for testicles, because yes. you know from you know from um Genesis 24:2 and 24:9 and Genesis 47 we know that the word thigh is a biblical euphemism for testicles that so for you to, to, for you to be cool with the, the big boss you got to grab up the testicle so we know that Jesus now has the king of kings and lord of lords tattooed on his testicles so if you want to know who Jesus is ladies and gentlemen you got to check the testicles Oh, <laughs> <man>. <laughs> you gotta all, right. all right, brother. Oh, Thank you. All Thank right, you, Garfield, man. Peace and love, man. Peace. That Peace. is all day. Peace. All right. Garfield, you are too much. <laughs> 
Garfield said, if you really want to find out who the real true Jesus is, I'm sorry, y'all, for laughing. I got to be more professional. My bad, but I'm only human. God, Garfield said, you got to check the testicles. <laughs> that is crazy. Hey, so what we did was we went in the back room and we found out. We looked it up. And Garfield, you are right. Jesus is walking around with a tattoo on his testicles. And... um. Lord of Lord, King of Kings. It's crazy that God will walk around here getting gang tattoos on his goddamn testicles. This is crazy, y'all. It's crazy. So what I would like to say right now is that um, let's deal with entrapment. Because I would like to bring somebody else up to the stage. And Brother Asar talks about God entrapping people. And so, as we looked up the information, we would like to say that Assal is right. You see it. It's on the screen. Entrapment. Numbers 22, 20, and 22. What's going on is that, let's listen to it. Read it for yourself. And God came unto Balaam at night and said unto him, if the men come, Listen to what God is telling them. God is saying, if the men come to call thee, raise up and go. God is telling them, if they come, I want you to go with them. Go ahead and go with them. This is entrapment. God is entrapping these niggas. Go and go with them. But ye, the word which I shall say unto them, they shall thou do. I don't mean, this This Bible should be crazy when you read this shit. But hey, God knows all things. He should have known that the language was going to change, right? But guess what? They did come. And, and Balaam rose up in the morning and saddled his ass, put the saddle on the horse, and went with the princess of Moab. Now check this out. And God's anger he went with them. God said, if they come to you, I want you to go. Don't even worry about it. Just go with them. Don't worry about it. And so when they came the next morning, he got up in the morning, saddled his ass, and went with the princess of Moab. And now check it out, 22. And God's anger was kindled, kindled because he went. How you getting mad, God? Because... He went with them, and you told him to go with them. And the angels of the Lord stood in the way of the of advisory, right? Adversary, right? Against him. Now he was riding upon his ass, and he and his two servants were with him. God got mad and upset because he went with him. But when you look at the first scripture, Numbers 22, 20 and 22, God told him, if they come, I want you to get up and I want you to go with them. And so he went with him. And so when the dude goes with him, God's get mad. God get mad at him for going with him. I would like to call to the stage, to the stand. Asa Imhotep. We got Brother Asal Imhotep on the line. And I want to let you know, Brother Asal, we got God of the Hebrew Israelites on trial today. And I would like to ask you, if it was any crime that you would accuse God of, what would that be, my brother? What would that be? What would that crime be? All righty. If, if we're going off of the uh, God of the Bible and, you know, what is written in it, um, based on the story of Adam and Eve, if we go all the way back to Genesis, I would say, I would charge um, the God of the Bible with entrapment. Mm. And so entrapment is when, you know, for example, if we're talking in legal terms with the, the police, it's... Um, when they set up a person to commit a crime 
And in this case, what we have is entrapment with Adam and Eve. And so they were set up to fail and then punished for their failure, for which failure was the only option in the end. So what do I mean? When, at, when the God of the Bible created Adam and Eve, he did not create them with intelligence and wisdom. They were just created. Now, you can't program intelligence and wisdom into somebody. It's not like a miraculous thing that comes and is bestowed upon someone, a quote-unquote spirit. Intelligence, wisdom, comes from experience. You have to live a while. You have to go through life making decisions and making mistakes, internalizing those experiences, and then learning from them and growing from them. The wisdom and intelligence comes from the reflections of the, the rights and wrongs that you were able to enact throughout your life. Your, your experience, your social experiences with other human beings. So when God created Adam and Eve, one, he didn't create them in community. There was only them two, Adam and Eve. They have no life experience. They're created as adults. So you don't hear about them as young babies or children and then growing into adulthood. They're just created as adults. So they have no life experience. They have no understanding of what is moral and just in the world. We know Listen, this because they have not partaken of the knowledge, the tr excuse me, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. In order for you to understand what is good and what is bad, you would have to partake in that. You would have to experience that. And since Adam and Eve have no life experience, how could they have known what the instructions were of God? Now, you know, because God, now, you know, God Go is going to take the stand and say, well, you know, I told them do not eat of this tree. Do not do it. That's what God is going to say in his defense. What do you say to that? It would be like telling your dog or telling a monkey not to do something. Mm. From an English, from a, a human being English communication, telling a dog and a monkey. They don't have the capacity to understand language gotcha. that we do. Good point, brother. They don't, they don't know what a definition is. They don't have a sense of morality. And so if you just create something, like if we were to create a robot... You know, a robot has no sense of what is um, right and what is wrong. These are human concepts mm -hmm. built from experience of living in a in a in a social setting, living in community. That's how we develop what is right or wrong, because we want to live in harmony within our communities and within our families. They don't even have a family at this time. There is no community there. So they don't have any experience or an, an, an ability to even understand what is good or evil. So when, you, when God gives them the commandment, there is no way for them to even understand what the commandments are. And so, of course, they were set up to fail. So if... if the story wouldn't be the story if they had knowledge of good and evil from the beginning. So God made them dumb and then punished them for being dumb, for not understanding what you did not give them, what you did not program them to understand. And so this is entrapment, a, a, a textbook definition of entrapment. And so this would be the charge. All right, man. Thank you, brother. 
did y'all understand that or did that shit go over y'all heads? I see it went over a few people's heads because I seen people in the chat saying, what the hell is this nigga talking about? It went over your head. When God created Adam and Eve with Asar is saying, they was already in their uh, adulthood. He created them grown men and women. They didn't have to go through no experience. They didn't know certain things. Their mind was not developed. So when God say, don't eat of that, don't eat of this, they don't have no understanding of what this shit is. Y'all missing it. And so we're going to go on with Acts 1 and 24. And they prayed and said, thou God, thou Lord, which knoweth the heart of all men. See? Check it. I want y'all to see something. This is deep. Where am I going with this? In Acts 1, 24. Come on, smartest chat room on YouTube. And they prayed and said unto thy Lord, which knoweth the heart of all men. All men. He knows the heart of all men. God knows the heart of all men. Where am I going? When you look at the scripture, this shows you that it can't be the working of, of God. There's got to be the working of man. That's our point. God ain't got nothing to do with this goddamn Bible. But in Acts 1, we're going to go along with the act. In Acts 1, 24, and they prayed and said, Thou Lord, which knoweth the heart of man. What is he talking about? If God already knows your heart, what the fuck is God doing being jealous? Of what man do. I'm going to let that shit marinate for y'all. That right there kills all of that. That kills everything. God has no right. First, let me say this. Let me say this. Before I say that. Being omniscient. Knowing everything. God has no right to be jealous. The fuck is God jealous of? Why is God jealous of if he's omniscient and omnipresent? He knows all things. We're talking about a God who knows everything. Cannot, God cannot have emotions. The Bible says that God experienced all emotions of humans, including anger, sadness, and happiness. How can he have all of that? Anger, sadness, and happiness if he's omnipresent if he's omniscient do y'all get it come on family reason with me now talk back to me do you get it if God is omniscient how can God experience emotions how can God have human emotions that includes anger sadness happiness jealousy how can he have all of these things if he's omniscient, meaning he already knows what's going to happen? For example, let me give y'all slow people an example. If you know what's going to happen 100 years from now, would you be upset if it happened 100 years later? Think about that. <laughs> y'all don't get it, man. Y'all don't. I'm, I'm just saying 100 years, but I'm going to say a million years later. Let's say that. How can you be jealous a million years later knowing this shit for a million years, God? When you yourself in Acts 1, 24, you already know the heart of all men. You know what they're going to do. You know their heart. Y'all don't even get it, man. I don't know. I don't know if I'm beating a goddamn dead horse, but you know, these goddamn Christians and these pastors, they will make a goddamn excuse for this. They will make an excuse for this. It's crazy. They will still try to make an excuse for this. And so, <laughs> who I was, I want to call to the stand. Before I call to the stand, but no, I'll call him to the stand. I would like to call Jeremiah Judah to the stand. 
And this brother is a representative of God. But remember what I said. We make all kinds of excuses for God. We make all kinds of excuses. Even when it's right there in our face. We still make excuses. Let's see if one of the lawyers for God can at least be honest and truthful and spill the beans on God and the end of this conversation. Will Jeremiah Judah admit that God have done these things? Without any further ado, I bring to the stand Jeremiah Judah. Yes, um, this is Brother Sarnetta, and I want to let you know that you have been subpoenaed to come into court. Um, I want to ask you real, a real quick question. Is it true, is it true that the Most High um, killed the man for not busting a nut into um, a woman, sir? The way you're explaining it is not going to, is making the brother look bad. Now, let me explain it in, in, in my perspective as a brother that can relate. Okay. But this was going down, see? Now, he had instructions from the family because the family is close and connected with the Most High Spirit. Yes. The Most High, the ancient. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I want y'all to first hear what he just said. God had instructions from the family? God had instructions from the family to kill the brother? This is what Jeremiah Judah said. He said God had instructions from the family. Now God needs instructions from the family to kill a brother for not busting a nut. Let's hear what Jeremiah Judah have to say again. I don't want to put no words in his mouth, but let's see if we hear what he said. Yes, um, this is Brother Sarnetta, and I want to let you know that you have been subpoenaed to come into court. Um, I want to ask you real, a real quick question. Is it true? Is it true that the Most High um, killed the man for not busting a nut into um, a woman, sir? The way you're explaining it is not going to, is making the brother look bad. Now, let me explain it in, in, in my perspective as a brother that can relate. Okay. But this was going down, see? Now, he had instructions from the family because the family is close and connected with the Most High Spirit. Yes. The Most High, the Ancient of Days. He's connected with that. So it was passed down, you know what I'm saying? Like, hey, just what you got to do. Go get, get, look, hey, your brother gone. Get your wife, get his wife pregnant to continue to see Judah. <clears throat> so this is what happened. He, he just enjoyed it and pulled out. Now you're being hard-headed. Now you got to go. So is Let's it go. true? Is it true that he All killed right. them? He slayed them just because he didn't bust the nut inside of her? Now, now, now see, see. Is it true? It's a yes or no question, uh -huh. sir. You have been right. sworn in. This is a yes All or right. no question. It's not difficult. It's what not you mean hard. Sworn in, man? I, All yeah, I'm I, asking I, I, you, I, I, order, I sir. Order Bible. in the court, sir. Order in the court. All I'm asking you. Uh, okay, let's do All it. I'm asking you is, is it true that the Most High slit a man, killed a man, all because he pulled out and did not exceed it, like busting the inside of a yes or no, sir? That's Yes, that is true. Yes, that is true. Yes, that is true. All right, thank you. We we finish here. Thank you, sir. Okay, so Jeremiah Judah, one of the representatives of God, at least he was honest. He was not like Pastor Williams, Pastor Bennett. He did not lie because he knew I had the receipts. If he would lie, I would come with the receipts and show that he is committing perjury on the stand. You see, but Pastor Bennett could not bring himself to admit that God did all of this crazy stuff. <laughs> this is crazy, y'all. See, when you got receipts, family, we're going to continue on, man, because I got a closure from Pastor Bennett. But I think Bennett did real good, and we're going we're gonna to go on, and we're going to see what's happening. So 
the Lord God, the Lord is good to all and to his tenderness, mercy, and all over his work. So God shows love, tender, mercy all over. But we already showed you all the people that God had killed. God had murdered children. God had killed people's wives. And we're going to get God filled on the phone for that. Because I was never able to get God's, um, God feels, um, testimony. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord God, do all these things. Now, you've seen at the beginning where all I showed you these videos with these babies being shot down, murdered, killed by stray bullets, people walking up on them and shooting them in the head. But God just said, he make peace and create evil. Let me ask the, the jury a question. Killing a child, walking up on them and shooting them in the head, is that evil? Would y'all say that that was an evil act? Remember, God is taking responsibility for all of this. God said, I create peace and I create evil. So who's doing it? Yes, it's being done by the hands of the man, but the, even the Hebrews will tell you nothing happens without the Most High. The Most High does everything. So God damn it, if the Most High does everything, then the Most High got to take the responsibility of killing all of these young babies with guns. Yes, wrong, act. What, which one is it? I would love to get the preacher and the pastor in here. I would take a call. Let me see before the pastor called out. I will take this call and ask. Let, let's see. Because we need to find this out. God is the creator of all things. Let's see if they start bucking right quick. And if they start bucking, God damn it, I'm going to get rid of them right away. <laughs> they, they watching. They don't want to call in. They don't want to pick up. They watching. These dudes don't want to pick up. They see it. Peace. Peace, what's up? Peace. What's up in mind? Peace and Black Power. What's happening, man? I want to first let you know that I am live. I'm doing the trial right now. How you doing? Would you like to come in and ask a, one question I have for you, sir? Just one question. Hello? Are you afraid to talk? You don't want to talk on the behalf of God? You don't want to represent God or nothing? Okay. Okay. He's scared. Let me call somebody else. Yeah. I'm asking you a question. How you doing, my brother? Peace. You're live on the air. I'm doing the show. Okay, your ass is scared. Let me find somebody else. These niggas, they talk all this shit, and then now they don't want to defend their Bible. They don't want to defend their God. Let me call another representative of God. See, they don't want no parts of this shit. They know they done. They know they done. Hello. Peace and black power. How you doing, my brother? Um, can you turn it down? I want to let you know that you are live right now. You are on the air. And I just have a question for you, my brother. How you doing? I'm blessed, man. All right. Um, I want to let the world know that we are speaking to our beloved brother, Jeremiah Judah. And um, I want to just ask you a question, brother, being that you are um, a representative of God, you represent God, you teach God, you, you know all of this thing, you have been subpoenaed into court. I want to ask you, my brother, um, is it true that God created peace and God created evil? This is just a simple yes or no. We don't want to take it all around the world, brother. Yes or no. Did God create evil and did God create peace? Yes or no, sir? In the book of Isaiah 45, 7. 
Okay. Yeah, the most I did create good, and he did create evil, yes. So um, let me ask you a question, Jeremiah Judah, because I know you live right now. We got over 1,507 people listening to you right now, and so we want to see if you could keep it real. Can you turn that down, please, in the background? You're distorted. No, I'm, I'm, I'm order gonna order in the okay. court, sir. Order in the court. Um, let me ask you this, sir. Sure. Um, all right, go ahead. All right, I would like to ask you, sir. Um, what scripture? Isaiah 45 and 7. Can I get to it? Yes, Isaiah go get to it, my brother. Isaiah 45 and 7. Where you won't commit perjury. We don't need no perjury being committed right now today. I would like for you to read it for yourself. I don't want to put words in God's mouth. Go ahead. You got it? Okay. Right, yeah. Can, can you read for us, sir? It said, I form the light, and I create darkness. I make peace, and I create evil. I, the Lord, do all things. Do all these God. things. Okay, sir. If I was to walk up to a child, five-year-old, I don't really know, care where, how old he is, and shoot him in the head, would that be evil, sir? Would that be an evil thing that I have done? Uh, depends on the situation. If it was, if it was in war then it wouldn't be considered evil. What kind of if war you know, can you be in? Well, in let's say, okay, let's say in it's Africa, not in war. Men, all right. Listen, they got young men that carry guns in Africa that fight war. Okay, all right. So, well, let's say this, this, on. well, right. Let's say this brother is don't have a gun on him. He is not in war. He is simply going home to be with his mother. And I pull out a gun when he knocks on the door and shoots him in the head. Would that be considered yeah, that, evil, sir? Yeah, that man, that man or woman's actions would be considered evil. Yes. Would God be responsible for that, sir? The black woman God would be responsible for that because she didn't teach because she didn't teach her kids right. Whoever whoever son or person who done a a, 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 a a child who done this. The, remember, y'all say the black woman God. So if she didn't train her kids up right, it's her fault. All right, sir. Listen to me very carefully. You are under oath. You have been sworn in under the homosexual King James Bible, sir. And I need you to listen to me. You have been sworn in under oath. Do not commit any perjury. You just read in the book of Isaiah. Don't worry about what we say. Who give a damn about what we say? You just said God said that he make peace and God creates evil. Man don't create evil. God created uh -huh. evil, which means that God is the one responsible for putting evil on the planet. Do you agree with that, sir? You are under oath. I agree that the Most High created good and evil. Okay. Can man create evil without the permission of God? No, man doesn't create these Thank things. Thank you. Thank you. Just answer the question. Thank you. Can okay. man create okay. anything that God can't create? Yes or no? Man can manipulate things. But I didn't ask you manipulate. I'm asking you again. Can man create something that God can't create? Yes or no? Man cannot man can create thoughts. Listen, sir. If man mm -hmm. can create any something that God can't create, then all that means is God did not create everything. So the answer to that, brother, would be no. Man cannot create what God can't create. Because if man can create what God can't create, then that means God did not create everything. So I'm going to ask you again. This is easy. This is Kenny God. Can man create... Can, can man create... Listen. Can man create... What God can't create. Yes or no? Can man create what God can't can't create? Yes. Man can cannot create. Man cannot create what uh, God can create. Thank you, brother. You know, That's it. Stop. Stop. Okay. Stop. Stop. Let's keep it going. Thank you. That's what I'm Let's talking go. about. So God keep said He create peace, and He create evil, but right. God created the evil spirit to go out there and kill that young boy instead of creating the spirit of peace when that young man knocked on that damn door. How come God right. didn't put peace over that brother, over that little young right. man, eight years old? Okay. Now, now listen, I can't do that on a yes or no on this one. Okay. Now, if, if, this, if, this, if this household 
do not follow the law, statutes, and commandments of our Bible, and maybe they follow like Satanism or a Buddhism or comedic culture or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Because you you don't know what that fight you don't know you don't know what them people was believing in. I do know what they was believing in. I do know. I got the video where the, where they showed the video where he was walking home and he knocked on his door and as soon as he opened up the door, the mother boyfriend killed him because he was jealous of the mother. So the mother boyfriend killed the little boy. So I do know what it was over. So why would God put the spirit of evil on this motherfucker to kill this little innocent little baby boy? Why would God do that? Okay. Instead of saying no, I know what's coming because you know why? I'm omniscient. Uh -huh. I already know all things. I know every goddamn thing. Right. Let me put the spirit okay. of love over this man right now because he's getting ready to do some wicked shit. I'm standing right beside uh -huh. him. I'm sitting right beside him. I'm looking right at him. Uh -huh. I see him getting the gun, cocking the goddamn gun. Let me put my Did spirit it? of peace uh -huh. over this man. How come God didn't okay. do that, sir? Okay. No, 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 this can't be no yes or no. Now, see, the Most High already created a spirit of good and evil. That person chose to choose the spirit of evil. So at the end of the day, when it's all said and done and over, when it comes to judgment time, you don't have to deal with his decision. Jeremiah, I really need you to understand. Jeremiah, no, I'm mm -hmm. going to keep it moving. It's not about what the man chose to, to choose. Is about what God put the spirit over him. That's what I'm asking you. Okay. How come God did not put the spirit of peace over the man instead of him choosing? God been putting the spirit of lies and prophets. He been sending great delusions. He been oh. sending earthquakes. He been sending tornadoes. How come God did not send peace? over these children that lost their lives in gunfire. That's what I'm asking you, brother. I, Don't make up no shit for God. Answer. Don't make this shit up for him. You know better than this, Jeremiah. You're a smart brother. Okay, I appreciate that. But what I'm trying to tell you, this is my perception of, of, of it. I, I, look, I can explain it to you, but I can't understand it for you. That's the lion's dead motto. That's how we live. We can explain it to y'all, but it's not, it's not up to us to understand it for you. I can take you to the water, but I can't make you drink. Okay, now what I'm trying to say is, from my understanding, the most I put out good spirits and he put out evil spirits. But I know you don't believe in this part, but we have a free will. Now, it's up to you to make that choice. If you want to be on this earth and say your soul like Jay-Z and, and, and do spirit cooking and all that and, and, and to do all that type of stuff, that's, that's what you're doing, but... You don't have to deal with that at the end. Jeremiah, that's, that's my, brother, my brother, my brother, I have proven to you, and it's like you mm -hmm. don't, you don't, even when you see it, you still don't want to believe it. I've showed you receipts where God does not give us a free will, where whenever time God interferes with us, he always got to interfere wickedly. You see? So he don't give us a free will, Jeremiah. Judah, come on, brother. I'm okay. trying to wake you up. Hold on, man. I'm really trying to hit you for real because you're a good brother. You need to see what's going on so that you can begin to join my fight, join my fight with Brother Garfield into waking our people up from this foolishness. Every time God does something, he interferes. How is that a free will? God send delusions of 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 lies god send delusions of 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 a great delusions of lying across the people god heartens the hearts of people how is that a free will if i got a free will then let me do it god kills a man for for not busting a nut into this woman okay, how is that we, a free will that, brother can we talk about that real quick can we talk go about ahead and talk quick? about it don't make up nothing just be reasonable right, think so about it okay now wait okay now see judah judah told him Judah told him to go and impregnate your brother's sister. Uh-huh. Well, not sister. Wife. Mom, right, let right. Get, let's get it right. Uh-huh. Yeah, I don't want y'all. Yes, uh, sir. Now, he didn't do that. He went in and just did, he just went in and, and did a good time. That's all he did was bang it, and he didn't, get a, he didn't follow orders. Like I said, back then, the most high would really get on you. He would open up the earth and swallow you up if he didn't listen. So let me ask you a question, Judah. Hey, Judah, let me ask you a question. Yeah. Go ahead. So go ahead. because... He didn't want to have a baby. He wasn't ready to have a baby. He pulled out and let the semen fall on the floor, and God comes over and kill him. Did God give him a free will to pull out 
or did God made it mandatory for him to do that, brother? Did God give him a free will? Yeah, he had a free will to, listen. He had Jeremiah, to stop, him. man. If he had a free will, why did God kill him for busting, for not busting the nut in up? Because he didn't follow orders. Right, so that means, sir, orders. Jeremiah, he, Jeremiah, listen he, to me. That means he didn't have a free will, brother. If he had the orders to follow. Oh, my God. Thank you, Jeremiah. I'm going to let you go, sir. Oh, oh, before you hang up, let me, let me tell you something. Go ahead, brother. Go ahead. All right. I just want to say this before we hang up. Go ahead. Now, I hear y'all talking about our God real quick. Give me, give me 30 seconds. But remember, y'all said that we didn't know nothing about this Bible and this God, so we got over here to America. So my question is, why didn't, um, didn't Ron save y'all from the white man? Why didn't the Excuse me? Say that again? And the ancestors, why didn't the ancestors warn y'all that the white man was coming? Why didn't the black woman God save y'all? I can answer that for you. Let me answer that for you. I'll answer that for you. Because God is omnipresent. God is omnipresent. Nobody knows all things on the planet but God. God knew that it was going to happen a million years ago, brother. God knew that this was going to happen. So it wasn't the responsibility of the black woman, but it was the responsibility of God whom we love, whom we put our love in and our heart and our trust. It was God's responsibility to protect us. That's who we believe that loved us, that protect us. Okay. We've been praying to this God for 400 to 500 years, Jeremiah Judah. Okay. Why do we get, we never looked up to the black woman for her to come and save us. We wanted to save her, but God took away our power. God gave the power to another man to rule over us. In fact, Jeremiah Judah, to go on, God have committed treason, and you, my brother, are like, uh, well, damn, what's that word I'm looking for? When you begin to fall in love with your rapist, when you begin to fall in love with your oppressor, what word I'm looking for? Help me out, y'all. Help me out. Uh, 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 some kind of sin- Stockholm syndrome. Stay- there you go. You, my uh, brother. Hold on. You, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. There's every Hebrew on the planet today, the pastor, all of you have become Stockholm syndrome. You have fallen in love with your goddamn murderer, with your rapist, with your oppressor, because God have done the Hebrews wickedly, savagely. He destroyed you. He murdered you. He raped you. All through the goddamn book, God have destroyed the goddamn Hebrews. So you, my brother, are Stockholm Syndrome right now. That's a fact. Because y'all right, still right. love this goddamn bastard, even though right. he's letting you know, I don't give a damn about you. I will sell you to anybody. And you niggas have been filled with Stockholm Syndrome and don't even know about it yet. That's why y'all still running out here preaching the word of God. Oh, he's the most loving family. We are not going for that no more. He's the most forgiving He's the most generous and merciful. No, this motherfucker's a killer. He's a wicked and a maniac. And you got to see it, Jeremiah Judah. All right. Now, 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 let me cross his hand a little bit. Go ahead, brother. All right. Now, first of all, I need to ask you real quick. Who, y'all always say that we stole from y'all. Y'all was first, right? So... If y'all was first, how did my God create good and evil? So when, when y'all guys was here first, according to y'all narrative. According to y'all, the Bible is plagiarized from Kenneth. So that must mean that a lot of the stuff that we're seeing has to come from y'all, according to your narrative. You see, I think you sit up there. You see, okay, you got how can y'all blame us when y'all said that we didn't start believing in God until we got over here to America? So where was your God? What was your ancestors protecting y'all from Whitey? What was all the wrong? Why did he let that come? Why did he let the Greeks and Romans come into Egypt and take over? You gotta start looking at what y'all believe in. Where was the principles that y'all believe in wasn't protecting y'all from the white man? You see? Okay, I see. 
All right, brother. Let's go to um. Let's go to the. We live. You recording this? We live right now. We on Southern right, Studios. Right. Let's go to the hey, Book of Psalms. What I need you to do is go to the Book of Psalms 106. All right. Okay, verse one. 106, right, verse one. I actually went out and got a King James Bible for you this time. Thank you. Please do not commit any more perjury on the stand. Kids, but that's not the real in the Bible I walk with. But yes, I, but please. Program, I got one. Yes, All please right. don't commit any perjury, sir. All right, where are we going? Psalms 106. I have no tolerance for perjury, brother. Even when you're looking at it yourself and you're reading it. Okay. Psalms 106, verse one. Uh-huh. Verse what? One. Okay. You got uh, it? Praise. Yeah, praise ye the Lord. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for he has mercy and endures now, what, what does that mean? Before. What does that mean, now, sir? The mercy part. Okay, now listen. Okay, when, okay let me listen. And when Pharaoh was killing all our babies, he had mercy on us for a long time. He even gave us ten times. You know, he had mercy on them. Then finally... Do what I mean. He wasn't doing right. Pharaoh wasn't doing right. So this is why he he, he used him to show our people his signs and wonders. So that's what it is. So he has mercy, but after a while, if you keep effing up, he gonna deal with you. He does. Let me ask you. Just, okay, I don't want to talk yeah. about Pharaoh and none of them. I'm talking okay, about today. You know, does on, hold on, brother? Okay. Just hold on. And does this scripture about, guys, does this scripture applies to us today? Does God have mercy on his people today, sir? Endurance forever? I, you know what? I think he do because we do a lot of wicked and evil. Back then, he was opening up, he was opening up the earth and swallowing it up real quick. So I think he's more... He has, would you say that God... Would you say that God was merciful? Would you say that God was merciful when he killed them 42 children, sir? Just for laughing okay. at somebody? Now, see, was God okay, merciful now, then? Right. Now watch this. Okay, now, back, see, children back there can, can, be, can, can be considered as, like, okay, let, let's look at Abraham. Let's look at some of the older people, right, that live a long life. To them, a 40-year-old or, or a 25-year-old will still be considered a child. You see what I'm saying? Objection, then, sir. That, Objection, that, sir. Objection, sir. Okay, Objection, sir. Let me get to the bears. Objection, let's, sir. I'm asking you a question. You don't know how old these children are. You don't know nothing about their behavior. Stop assuming. Stop trying to lead the witness, sir. I'm asking you. Do you agree that God killed 42 young little boys just for laughing at an old man going up the mountain? Do you agree with that? And if you do, then where was the mercy endurance? Forever. God said forever. He is forever merciful. Where was your mercy, God? Okay, now listen there. Okay, now listen. They was blocking the prophet from going up the mountain. Okay? He now listen. You it said they was what? They was what? They were blocking. They were blocking him from going his path. You know what I'm saying? They being wicked and evil. I mean, get out the way. We got things to do. They in the way. And you know, he didn't see no grizzly bears, because in Palestine they don't have no big ass bears. They got little bitty brown bears. So you're I saying that God bears. lying he now? So God okay, is lying when he said he sent <laughs> bears, two bears? God lied? Did, 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 did the scripture say that the bear killed 42 people? Did yes, he, it does. Do it, is that, yes, it does. Exactly. Can you go through? Uh, let me, uh, oh, my God, man. Come on, man. I done did this already. I did this okay, before. You don't want to go the I don't, okay, I don't think I have it loaded. Then we're later then. But, okay, that's cool. That's cool. But what I'm saying is, it, I don't think that the bear killed all 42. I, I, I haven't really read that part. That, I didn't see in there where it said he killed 42 people. So if I show it to you, then what would you say, sir? To make me go okay, and get this. Then you, then you would have to say guilty. God is guilty okay, for yeah. killing them, huh? No, I would have to say that they should have got the hell out the way if one of his pockets was trying to go up the mountain. <laughs> you in the way. Hey, hey, bear, get him. Hey, put the bears on him. Jeremiah the Judah, my brother, man. I, I love you, brother, that, man. Family. Oh, man. Hey, hey. Hey, All right, I ain't got no problem with it. They ain't away with you, know, ain't away. So you agree with God killing 42 children, sir? If you do, you agree with, with, uh, with Pharaoh killing all our babies? If you can, you agree, can you do you agree with that? Yes, I do. Yeah, that's what I thought. You got to me. But I want to. I want to let you know. You got to go into the. You're not going to ask me yeah, why I agree. You're uh, not going to ask me why I agree with it. Ask me why. I tell you why. I give you a good reason. Okay. Now, now listen. 
before you get I already know what you're going to say. We did not come over there and rob and raise and all that stuff. We had it. The reason, the reason why I agree with it is because any uh-huh. man, any man will protect uh-huh. his home. And so when you got a group of Israelites coming into your home to invade, uh-huh. to rape, to murder, uh-huh. to pillage, uh-huh. of course you're going to protect your home and drive them out and run them out. So yes, I do agree with with um the Egyptians standing up to kill to protect their women and their family. Anybody would do that. Ask anybody. Would you allow any man to come into your home and pillage and kill your babies and children and rape your woman and all that? No. So that's why I do agree with it. Can you support a scripture showing that Israelites came raped and pillaged the Egyptian women? Can you pull that up for me right now? Go. It, it will not be in the scripture. But yeah, according to you, according to you, hold on, hold on, my brother. According to y'all, y'all ran up in Egypt. Y'all took over Egypt. Seventy of y'all went up in there, and y'all went up in there and did what? Conquered. Tried to take over. So what is you talking about? That, that's y'all telling it. So anyway, I want to thank you, brother. I want to move on, man. I want to move on, brother. No, I got some more because I want to talk about some of the ones. I, I wrote the scripture down about the Ezekiel. I mean, let me go to the scripture real quick. Then just give me two minutes. Hold on. Go ahead. And while you're doing that, I'm gonna go and get the scripture for you, where uh, I show you that God killed them, them children. Okay, because you got Second Thessalonians. You, you said something about Second Second Thessalonians and Ezekiel four and nine, fourteen and nine. Let, let, let's just go to Ezekiel fourteen and nine real quick. Can we do that just real quick? Go ahead, brother. Go do what you do. All right, I'm, I'm going to show you something real quick so you won't make this error again, you know, and, uh, you know, kind of, I want people to understand what's going on. Now, in Ezekiel 14, the Most High is talking about turning from idols. I'm going to skim through it real quick so you can get an understanding, okay? I'm going to go real quick. All right, I'm going to start at one. I'm going to go real quick. Watch this. There came the elders of Israel unto me, and the word of, God, of the Lord came unto me, saying, These men set up idols should i be inquired of by them therefore every man that set up idols and cometh to the prophet i the lord will answer him that i may take israel in their own heart because they are estranged from me through their idols therefore repent and turn from your idols for everyone that separated himself from me and set it up idols in his heart we begin to your scripture we're coming to it and, and cometh to the prophet to inquire of me, will set my will set my face against that man, and I will make him a proverb and cut him off from my people. And if that prophet be deceived, I, the Lord, have deceived that prophet, and I will destroy him. So you, and then, you, you got to go through the whole process now. You just can't. I, I, thought, we, I thought I thought I learned you this last time we had a conversation. You got to go through the full context. To get the understanding, because you just can't pick out one and don't, and then that's that's not giving everybody the understanding of the chat. All right, thank you, sir, and, for calling in. I appreciate right, you, man. All right, but anytime you need school, listen, I was, I'm gonna give a shout out to the Lions Den, 19 groups on Facebook, over 100,000 combined. Shout out so, to well, the Lions Den, man. What? Peace and black power right, to you, brother. Hello, you're gonna be coming on there, remember? Yes, you I'll come on in. All right, thank you, brother. Appreciate all you. All right, so long. Peace. Peace. All right, family, as you can see that the people will go through limbs, that they will jump through hoops, that they will, all, they will also jump in the fire to defend something that's not even real, to defend something that had murdered them, that brutalized them. They will defend this God, right? So what I would like to do is continue on, and I would like to call to the stand. Black Jesus Minister. Good morning. Uh, good morning, sir. Uh, this is Black Jesus Minister. I want to let you know that you have been subpoenaed into court. And I just want to know that, um, is it true with the yes or no, and I am taping, is it true with the yes or no that God killed 42 children for laughing at a, at a man going up the hill? Yes or no, sir? Is it true? Uh, brother, did you just say I have been subpoenaed to court, brother? Yes, sir. And I want you to know that you are under oath and um, anything. Now, what I want y'all to see is for the four minutes and change 
they refuse to answer these questions, y'all. This is crazy. <laughs> Order in the goddamn court right now. They refuse to answer questions when they know that I got them. I got them on the ropes. They don't want to snitch on God. They ain't got to snitch. God told on his goddamn self. You feel me? I thought I um, put that scripture in there, but I didn't. My bad. But let's go right back to it. Let's get Black Jesus Minister back on the stand. Good morning. Uh, good morning, sir. Uh, this is Black Jesus Minister. I want to let you know that you have been subpoenaed into court. And I just want to know that um, is it true with the yes or no? And I am taping. Is it true with the yes or no that God killed 42 children for laughing at a, at a man going up the hill? Yes or no, sir? Is it true? Uh, brother, did you just say I have been subpoenaed to court, brother? Yes, sir. And I want you to know that you are under oath. And um, anything you say can and will be used against you, sir. I'm just letting you know you are under the King James homosexual Bible, sir. You are under oath. So I'm just asking you don't lie because I know you are a co-defendant of God. But I just want to ask you a simple question being that we talking about God. Is it true that God killed 42 children for laughing at a bald man going up the mountain, sir? Yes or no? You're not going to do a little drive-by and a little sneak-by and have me recorded on your program no when I have not bro. to do that, brother. So I'm just time. asking you a question about the Bible, sir. You have an opportunity brother, to you, teach brother. the people. You have an opportunity uh, to, to clear God's name. Did he do it or he didn't do it? That's uh, all I'm okay. asking you. Uh, uh, brother, he brother, is on trial, brother. sir. Brother. Yes. Uh, now, listen, brother. Is this another type of uh, interrogation where you get to ask all the questions? No, sir. This is not that. No, sir. This and, is not that, sir. Up on people. No, sir. Uh, no, sir. This is not that, sir. I'm just asking you a simple question. You have an opportunity to kill your co-defender's name. God is on trial. And I'm just asking you because they are accusing him of killing 42 people, sir. I'm asking you. 42 children, to be exact. So I'm asking right. you, is it true right. that God killed 42 children? Now, now, look here, brother. I'm not going to answer your leading question the way you asked ask the question, bro. You're going to ask me a simple question, and then I will give you a thorough answer without you interrupting and without you threatening to hang up on me, dear brother. I don't understand the context of the show. What's the name of this show? And you say we're live. And I don't like sometimes the way you title your shows, brother. Okay? I don't know the title of this show. I don't know the, the nuance of this show, the foundation of this show, brother, because you like to switch and change things around and twist things around the way you want it after the whole way, bro. Need I remind you, sir, you are under oath of, under the King James uh, Bible, no, sir. I'm not under no damn oath. I'm always going to speak the truth, brother. Well, that's all I'm asking you. Why are you afraid you know, to speak you know, the truth? Your subpoena is worthless, brother. It's worthless when you're talking to a real man of God, brother. And a brother who loves the people. I'm just letting you know you are under the King James homosexual Bible, sir. You are under oath. And it speaks the truth, brother, all, at all times, brother. So you don't want to you don't want to speak the truth right now, uh, brother. Let, let's 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 go, brother. Now, what is your question? Not your leading question. What is your question, brother? So I'm there. Okay, my question for you, sir, with a yes or no. God is on trial. And you have been subpoenaed as one of the, um, you know, the, the brothers that seen this, the brothers that know this. They told me that you, you are an eyewitness to this action. You know about this action. You read the Bible all the time. You read the Bible. So I'm asking you, sir, is it true that God killed 42 children for laughing at an old man going up the mountain, sir? Yes or no? Now, first of all, dear brother, like I told you, God ain't on trial, brother. God ain't on trial. God is responsible for the very breath that's coming out of your body, Psalm Netta. The very breath of life is in you. You owe it to the Creator, brother. Sir, can you answer the question, sir? Hold on, brother. 
How are you going to sit up here and condemn the creator? I'm not condemning him. I'm asking you a question. I'm not condemning him. You can clear God's name right now. Uh, I'm uh, brother, asking you a brother, question, brother, sir. No, okay, okay, okay. I'll tell you what, brother. Yes. All right. He said, here, tell me what. And I said, what? Yes. And he hung up. So, black Jesus minister, he had left God hanging on the stand by himself. He had ran and didn't want to answer the question. He didn't want to put himself in jeopardy of committing perjury. So he would rather hang up before he come and snitch on God. I respect that. I respect that, that you don't want to be a snitch. But just don't come back here talking this God stuff. Don't come back over here talking this God stuff to us. Okay? So he pleaded the fifth. He hangs out. He runs. And it is what it is. So what I would like to do is bring Garfield to the stand because we're getting ready to close. I have closure coming from um, one of the lawyers of God, representing God, uh, Pastor Bennett. He's going in. And then I have um, a closure who is one of the prosecutors who will be closing out for that as well. So what I would like to do is bring Garfield back to the stand. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to bring Garfield back to the stand for his... um. Powerful. This is a powerful testimony that is about to come. Uh, Brother Garfield, you got the mic, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, we're going to talk about a gang rape. And a gang rape is like a, you know, like a group of men trying to rape a child, uh, rape a woman, rape a man, whatever they're trying to do. Because in the Bible, you know how they go. But this story is based off of Genesis 19, which has to do with the just and righteous life. When he offers his virgin daughters to a crowd of angel rapers. So Genesis 19 is the prerequisite, as these Hebrews say, the, pre the precept. This is basically the precept for this nastiness that was going on in the Bible in Judges 19. So Judges 19 is about gang rape, dismemberment, and body part messages being sent to the 12 tribes of Israel. This is what your God allows. So check it out. Nine, Judges 19.22 Now as they were making their hearts merry Behold The men of the city Certain sons of Belial Beset the house roundabout And beat at the door Boom 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 Now the dude comes to the house Who's the master of the house The old man saying He said bring forth the man that came into thine house That we may know him Judges 19.22 Why do you want to know him? Can't you just picture this? All the men of the city come to a house and say, hey, I demand to have sex with the new guy in town. That's it. So what do you think the host did when he answered the door? <laughs> Guess what he did? He offered the mob his virgin daughter. This is reminiscent of, of GMS when Polite was talking to them. He gave them up his virgin daughter. It's the polite thing to do. And just and righteous men would do the same, of course. Behold, here is my daughter, a maiden, and his concubine. Them I will bring out now and humble ye them and do with them what seemeth good unto you. But unto this man, the new man in town, do not so vile a thing. Judges 19.22. So now, Sarneda, so you're telling me so a group of dudes knock on your door, you're going to offer up your virgin daughter, bro? Who, 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 who is going to do that? Israelites? Who's going to do that? A Levite? Who's going to do that? Benjamite? Who's going to do this stuff? Only people who's attached to this crazy book with this crazy God. But listen to this now. The men, though, they said, nah, Sarnetta, we don't want the virgin daughter. So he gave them the concubine instead. But the men would not hearken to them. So the man took his concubine and brought her forth unto them, and they knew her, and abused her all the night until the morning. Judges 19.25. Y'all can go check it out. The next morning, the concubine came So, excuse me, house. sir. Excuse me, sir. To bring clarity. So, when you're saying that they used her all the night, you are saying that they raped her. They ran a train yeah, on her, they, sir. Yeah, they ran a train. Like what we knew back in the days when dudes was running train in, in Jamaica, we call it battery. We run battery for a girl. So what they do now, they ran a train on her, which was a group rape. Judges 1925, confirm it. So now the next morning, the concubine now come back to the house. And after all of that family, she collapsed at the door. The Levite opened the door 
saw the concubine land here and told her to get up, but she didn't answer. So he put, so he put her on his donkey and went home. And when he was come into his house, he took a knife and laid hold on his concubine and divided her together with her bones into 12 pieces and sent her into all the coast of Israel. Judges 1929. So he sent 12 pieces of her divided up into 12 to the 12 tribes of Israel. What type of God is that? The Levites cut the Levite cut the concubine into 12 pieces and sent the bloody body parts to the 12 tribes of Israel. Family, this is sick. Now look at Judges 1930, family. Four things we realize from this story. God approves of a man having sex with a, having a sex slave, which is a concubine. God approves of a father offering his virgin daughter to a sex-crazed um, sodomite mob. Number three, he approves of chopping up bodies, whether they are dead or alive. And four, he approves of sending messages with 12 bloody body parts to the 12 tribes of Israel. What was the purpose of that, family? What was the real purpose of that? So you're telling me now, this man takes your daughter or your concubine, and then she the way back and collapses at your house. And what do you do, family? What do you do? You know what you do? You cut her into 12 pieces and send them to the 12 tribes of Israel. What type of God is this? You can't tell me nothing about this God. Yeah. This God is nuts. Oh, man, that is crazy, man. But what gets me the most is that before they wanted, I told you, before they would try to rape the woman, they would always want to rape the man. They wanted to rape the man first. And so what he said was, no, I'm not going to give you the man, but I will give you my virgin daughter. He was ready to give up his virgin daughter. Who would do that? This is where they get all of this crazy stuff from, these Hebrews. With these Hebrews running around. Talking this foolishness. Let's find out and see if God representatives will also say they got this from God. said it was okay to rape 12 year old girls is that when you go into the law in the ancient world men if they saw a woman that they like they can grab the woman up and rape the woman man <laughs> and, then they, and we're going to read the scriptures we're going to read the scriptures the word humble when you go into the hebrew the word humble is the word i not when you look up the word i not it means to force to take by force to arrest so what does that word mean rape yeah. It means rape. Now that the Bible has made it clear that it's permissible to rape, mm -hmm. why are we still reading the Bible? I mean, How many of your fathers here? Just be for real. If you're a I'm father. A father. Now, a father. now, what, what if someone is overwhelmed by the spirit of the Most High God? And he reads your scripture and he take your daughter and he just rape your daughter. What do you say to that? If he if he live like you live, walk like you walk, talk like you talk. Because y'all y'all live amongst each other. Yeah. Y'all live amongst each other. So what happens when one of y'all feels so overwhelmed by the spirit of God that when you see one of each other's daughters, you just grab her up. You gonna tell one of these brothers here? Come on, you know the doctrine. You know how it get when you get. Well, well, answer, 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 answer it. Answer it. We just told you that. that how would y'all respond? In this time, we're not, we're not this, that, that, that was. That was but if it did happen, happen hold on, but if it now, did happen, on. but if it did happen, you would let allow it to happen. Why? Because you go back to the scriptures. You're supposed to be a brother. Hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. You, you gonna allow one of your brothers to rape Wait. your daughter? You said we gonna get women when they. 12 years old. Right. All right. Say it again. As soon as they start in the kingdom of heaven, when their period starts, that's when they become a woman. Okay. All right. So we're going to deal with them when they, when their period uh, 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 starts. Right. When that's their when monthly starts. Have, Question. have sex with sex. them. Have babies, man. No. With 12 year olds. Brother, there's this. In the kingdom, we're going to do that, man. We're going to get them young. <laughs> we're going to get them young. And the so now. You can look at them and you see these old men saying 
that they're gonna have sex with 12 year old. Look at they look at them right quick. I'm gonna pause this and stop it and freeze it right there. Take a look at these men, these old men right here. And they are saying God said that it's all right. That God said I can have sex with 12 year olds. If a 10 year old come on her ministration, God damn it, I can have sex with her. Can you imagine walking in the room, seeing these niggas between the legs? I don't even want to even bring that up, God damn. But this is some wicked, evil shit. I just have a question for all of you Hebrews out there. How come y'all didn't condemn this? How come you waited until me and Polite gets up and we put it out there and we show the world the mindset of a Hebrew and the thinking of Hebrews? Huh? This shit is crazy, y'all. This shit is crazy. Look at them. Old ass niggas talking about they gonna be that the most high. So now they snitching and they dropping it on most high. They said the most high said it was all right. What scripture did they say? Let's see. You said it was okay to rape 12 year old girls. Is that when you go into the law in the ancient world, men, if they saw a woman that they like, they can grab the woman up and rape the woman, man. <laughs> and, then they, and we're going to read the scriptures. We're going to read the scriptures. The word humble, when you go into the Hebrew, the word humble Snitching is the word aina. Yep. When you look up the word aina, it means to force, to take by force, Understood. to arrest. So what does that word mean? Rape. Yeah. It means rape. Now that the Bible has made it clear that it's permissible to rape, why are we still reading the Bible? How many of your fathers here? Just be for real. You're a I'm father. A father. Now, a now, what, what if someone is overwhelmed by the spirit of the most high God and he reads your scripture and he take your daughter and he just rape your daughter? What do you say to that? If he, if he live like you live, walk like you walk, talk like you talk. Because y'all y'all live amongst each other. Yeah. Y'all live amongst each other. So what happens when one of y'all feels so overwhelmed by the spirit of God that when you see one of each other's daughters, you just grab her up? You're going to tell one of these brothers here? Come on, you know the doctrine. You know how it get when you get. Well, well, answer, 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 answer it, answer it, answer it. We just told you that. that how would y'all respond? In this time, we're not, we're not this, that, that was, that was but if happen, it did happen, 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 hold on. But if it did happen, but if it did happen, you would let allow it to happen. Why? Because you go back to the scriptures. You're supposed to be a brother. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You gonna allow one of your brothers to rape your daughter? You said we gonna get women when they. 12 years old. Right. All right. Say it again. As soon as they start in the kingdom of heaven, when their period starts, that's when they become a woman. Okay. All right. So we're going to deal with them when they, when their period uh, 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 starts. Right. When their monthly starts. Have, babies. Question. have sex with them. Have babies, man. With 12 year olds. Brother, there's this. In the kingdom, we're going to do that, man. We're going to get them young. We're going to get them young. And the king Damn. That's what they waiting on. That's what they praying on, y'all. To go to the kingdom so they can get 12-year-old little girls, y'all. This is your Hebrew Israelites, y'all. Hey, it's in the Bible. They snitching on God. They telling you God is the one that said it's all right. That it's okay. That's a damn shame. And see, they have no respect for the woman. This is what they say. This is what God say, how you treat the black woman. Let's look at it, for example. In Romans 16 and 1, let the woman learn in silence with all sub subjection, 12, but I suffer not a woman to teach. See that? A woman can't even teach. A woman can't even teach, nor to absorb, abs, absorb, I mean, um, damn, my bad, man. <laughs> my bad, damn, I'm stumbling over the words. Authority over the, over the man, but be in silence. You got to be in silence. When it comes to men. But check this out. Here's the men that God is telling you. Just look at these men right here. That God said y'all can't even teach. 
Y'all got to submit to the man. Because <laughs> y'all not qualified to teach. Family? This is what you got to submit to, sisters. This is what you got to submit to. You've been teaching your sons all their life until they got grown. And now God is telling you you can't even you can't even teach over them. You got to submit to these men right here. You can't teach them now that they grown. Don't y'all find something wrong with that? Huh? Don't you see something wrong with this picture, y'all? Is this the reason why our men are killing men? Because they don't want the woman to teach no more? Check. When you know that the black woman is the first teacher, the first nurturer, huh? But in the book, God is telling you, no. You can't usurp the man. You can't usurp none of them. You got to fall in line to these niggas. Look at these dumb Negroes. Look at them. But you got to submit to them. Look at this shit. You ain't got enough sense, sister, to teach these black men no more. Look at them. I just want to show you that this is what God is telling you, sisters, that you have to bow down to and let lead your household. You have to let lead your household. Damn. If this is not a sad day. Do y'all see this? So in Romans 16 and 1, let the woman learn in silence with all subjection, but I suffer not a woman to teach nor to usurp authority over the man but to be in silence. Family, if that's not crazy, I don't know what is. That's the reason why the world is what it is today because the sisters have been sat down off their posts, taken out of order, when we know that it is the woman's job to nurture, to teach, the first nourisher, the teacher. Look at these niggas killing each other, killing, killing children because the woman is not there to teach no more. Y'all want her to sit down when we know that our women can get emotional and teach us to put them guns down. Stop that. We need the love because the woman, the first thing that they do is protect what? They child. So we need y'all to put them guns down. That's the first thing that they're going to tease their children. They don't want, the black woman don't want to see her child out there in the street with guns. Huh? Check. But now God wants you to submit to these brothers. Now, I ain't even put up the damn winos. I ain't even put up the homosexuals. Y'all can't even teach the homosexuals. These niggas can't even teach themselves how to come out the house right. But they want the black woman to submit to the man. Check. Y'all niggas is crazy to follow this crazy ass book. Think about that. Just think about that. Yes, the world is damn sure lost. That we got to listen to a goddamn God. But see, the white woman damn sure ain't going to listen to no goddamn book when it's telling her to do this. To follow your man when they in conditions like this. No wonder the sisters is in the condition that they're in. No wonder that the world is in the, in the position that they're in today. Because y'all let this nigga, these niggas, tell y'all that a woman cannot get on the pulpit and teach. 
damn shame. This is a damn shame. So here's your men, brothers. Here's your men, sisters, that you got to submit to. God said you got to submit to them. I want to bring one man to the stand and then we're going to have closure and then we'll open up for the questions. I want to bring one man to the stand, another man to the stand. This shit is crazy. Savage. But you sisters, you got you to gotta let them men lead you. They got to be the ones that's leading you. The Bible said y'all can't lead, y'all can't teach. <laughs> Think about that. Because if you was teaching, sisters, see, my wife never stopped teaching. That's why my children would never walk the street like that. They know better than that. Why? Because my, my wife teaches their children. This is, ain't nothing gangster about this type of shit. How can this be gangster showing another man your ass? That's the shit that we need to question and ask ourselves that. What part of showing another man your backside gangster, y'all? Huh? Check. So come into the stand. I bring to uh, you. Because he knows everything. He does everything. So he claims he loves us. So he loves us. And he's omnipresent and omnipotent. He let thousands of years of slavery go by between the trans saharan slave trade and the John Hawkins slave trade. So you put all these things together, it's damn near 2,000 years worth of involuntary servitude. Where was he at this whole time? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I would, I would label God, I would, I would bring the call for false advertisement. Force you know ad when you say false advertisement, that's the point that is, that's getting me. Because he sold us on the idea. Look, okay. if, God is, if God is omnipresent, he's omnipotent, uh -huh. right? Yeah. That's one. And he definitely is the God of black people. That's what they always say. Right. So if he's the God of black people, where was he during the trans-Saharan slave trade? I that took you. over 1,200 years. They made us eunuchs. That's why all them Arabs and everybody is, they have Nubian features, but they real light skin. But you can see remnants of our phenotype there because what they did, they raped our women perpetually. And they double castrated us. This is going on over 1,200 years. We were talking about the white man, but the Arab put the murder game down way before, for way longer. Mm. He got his whole business model from him. You feel what I'm saying? Right. It's just that what he did, he made slavery more appealing. So niggas was like, yo, I'd rather be enslaved by the white man than this Arab. So we started selling ourselves over to them. Just a fact. That's the part of the story they don't tell you. You know, because black people did sell black people into slavery. If he's omnipresent, he's omnipotent, and he's the god of black people right and uh -huh. he has all the powers to do everything in the world then where was he at the fourth the 1200 plus years and where was he at the 400 plus years when it comes to this white man that's 1600 plus mm, yeah you know what i'm saying so uh, you were... if, I, if i was bringing him to court i would have him for false advertising because he told me <laughs> on this whole idea now we're in an abusive relationship with god so what happened is you see how a woman get beat up by a man so long uh -huh. she starts to contemplate or concede that it's something she's doing wrong so she stay in a relationship. Cause after a while, you beat somebody long enough. Like you study Iceberg Slim work. If you read his book, it's real dope. Cause if you if you study Iceberg Slim book, you know he'll tell you beat the hell out of a woman so badly, and then make sure you're the only person that's there to raise her back up to stature. That's what he teach as a So crazy. We in that kind of abusive relationship with the God version that they gave us, the indoctrination that they gave us about God. God is in an abusive relationship where we always getting shitted on, and then we start to say, man, but, you know, I, I love him. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Jesus only will wake me up, right? right? So that's the type of stuff we, that they got going on. Cause remember, the letter J don't come into the outbreak until 1524. And, and 40 years later, there's a ship created after Jesus' name. There was no letter J. So nobody was calling on Jesus thousands of years ago or 2,000 years ago during the Abrahamic religion's deception. There's nobody that was being called Jehovah or Jesus because the letter J just came in 1524. So now that we know the letter J just came in 1524, 40 years later, they got a ship called Jesus. And if you listen to the slave songs, if you listen to our people in church sing about Jesus, you always hear water associated in the song. Oh. 
That's a fact. You always hear about Jesus and water and hoping for Jesus to come back. Because the slaves made that song hoping the boat named Jesus come back. And this is an actual fact. 40 years from the time they added the letter J to the alphabet, 40 years later, they created a boat called Jesus. And that's why every song in church where they sing about Jesus coming back, you always hear something about water in that. You know what I'm saying? Because they asking for the boat to come back. But we sing it to this day. You feel me? Now, yes. if you present this information to people, there goes that abusive relationship again. Oh, no, no. It can't, you know, it can't be. We, we just going to stick here despite all the signs where you know you need to get out of that situation. You're going to stay in it. Because now we're addicted to the abuse. Now, now it's like Stockholm Syndrome at this point. All oh, right, family. So right now we are coming up to the closing part of I would like to bring to you the attorney for God, Pastor William Bennett, and he's going to give closure, and then the prosecutor will follow Pastor Bennett. Right now, let's get to Pastor Bennett. I call you up, Counselor. Remember, order in the court. I call you up for closure, Pastor Bennett. You have the floor, sir. I'll bring up to the stage uh, Pastor Bennett for his closing arguments. I want to let you know that he has been accused of massive murder. He has been a compulsive liar, a deceiver, um, treason. He has committed treason, jealousy, too weak to be the commander-in-chief of the world. And um, also, slavery. He has condoned slavery. And you have the floor, Pastor Bennett. It is on you, sir. All right, all right. Um, so, I want to say a couple of things um, as we go into this. That, number one, for the just sake of this conversation, we're going to make it clear, very clear, that the only reason that we even have the opportunity to have these types of conversations is that God is being gracious and merciful to those who mock him. What I would encourage everyone to do, to speak your opinions as you wish, but be very careful to mock the God of heaven and earth. But it will also be very clear to show that you cannot try God in any court to even think to do so you are only in your wicked imagination thinking that you can find guilty who created you and to that I would say you're no different than Lucifer you're prideful you're prideful the same Lucifer who said I will go into the heavens and put my throne above God. See, that's the problem with man. When mortal man, whose days are like vapor, who could be here today and gone tomorrow, at the snap of a finger, begin to question the Almighty God. Just for the sake of this argument, because my only objective at this time is to not defend God, because God is very capable of defending himself but to show y'all the ignorance of trying to play this game with Almighty God. So let me start by saying, since we're pretending and imagining that we're in some sense of court of law against the Almighty, that number one, you have insufficient evidence. And the reason you have insufficient evidence is because you have incomplete evidence. Secondly, to people like my brother Sonetta and others, you have false evidence. Thirdly, in a court of law, the case is going to get kicked out because you're biased. And no jury can try a case if they're biased. No prosecutor can try a case if they are found to be biased. And the judge will be dismissed because they're biased. So if Sal or the, or the people are the judges, if you're against God, you're already biased to him. But the reason God will be found innocent, as he always is, because he is the true and only judge. But let's get into it. The true crime is not God. It's not God committing crime. The true crime is that man who was created by God, 
are trying to put the God that created them on trial. Let me give you the scripture in Romans chapter 9 that says this. Thou will say unto me, why does he yet find fault? For who have resisted his will? Nay, but, O oh man, who are you that replies against God? Shall the things form say to him that formed it, why hast thou made us? have not the potter power over the clay. In other words, what the Word of God is teaching us is what we already know. You don't let your kids talk to you like they the parent. You don't let the clay tell the potter how to form it. The man don't tell the God that created them that he's right or he's wrong. The truth of the matter is God created man. Man did not create God. And since man did not create God, but was created by God, they got no right to put God on trial. In fact, we should put the ones who think they are old enough and prideful enough to question who created them. Since we know and they know they did not create themselves. Right? Man who had to be t taught how to crawl. Man who had to be taught how to walk. Man who had to be taught how to talk. Man who had to be taught how to eat now has the knowledge to question who made the heavens. That man now has the knowledge to question who made the sun, moon, and stars. Now that man has the audacity to question the almighty God when they have an existence. Now they want to question the one who has no existence. You should be ashamed of yourself to even consider that you have that type of knowledge when you got to be taught just how to drive a car on the street. Now you've got the nerve to question the things of life. Timid believers, timid believers, since we're always questioning Bible believers and the Christian God, that's who needs to be on trial. Timid believers who speak about a mythical God and mythical goddesses as though they are. Yet they say there is no God. Man made him up, yet they talk about Ma'at as if she exists. But they tell us, we made up God. Well, who the heck made up Ma'at? Because there are some timid believers who really is just mythical, but truth be told, we know that there are some who believe those God and goddesses are real. But who made them up? The same timid believers who say, man, God didn't write the Bible. We know God didn't write the Bible. We never said God wrote the Bible. Man wrote it, but God inspired it, which is what the Bible said. So get your facts right. But since Bible um, thumpers have a problem with man writing what God inspired, let me ask you a question. Who wrote the principles of my art? Because I had timid believers tell me that man wrote it. So because man wrote the principles of my art Pastor, go on and in, they subscribe to it, should we not subscribe to it? Because man wrote it, ancient man of old, wrote these principles that timid believers claim to this day. So man wrote the Bible and you got a problem with it. Man wrote the principles of my art and you subscribe to it. All you're proving is that God is not on trial. Your free will is on trial because you choose to believe what you want to believe. And the thing you don't believe, you criticize, which is what you say the Bible believers do. But you believe in something that man wrote too. And you believe that they wrote it and you was never there to see them never there to see them write it, but you believe they did. Here is what I want to tell you, and I ain't even got to go much longer. But if your premise is wrong, then your argument will be wrong. I'll say that again for the people in the back. If your premise is wrong, then your argument will be wrong. If your premise is wrong about the Bible, then your argument about the Bible will be wrong. If your foundation is wrong, then the house that you build won't stand. I say that again for the people in the back. If your foundation is wrong, then the house you build will not stand. So let me explain how your premise is wrong about the Bible, how your foundation is wrong about God. And we'll start here. We can deny scripture all day long. Go ahead and deny scripture, but the one thing you can't deny is creation. And one thing that scripture says is that even if you won't believe God through scripture, there's no way you can deny him by nature. You don't believe God 
created the heavens and the earth, but you know something or somebody did. You don't believe that Adam named the animals, but you know somebody named them because we call the alligator an alligator, but we all know animals were here before man. So then who gave the animals their name? Tell me the man that did that. Since you won't claim it was Adam, like the Bible says, but you know somebody did. So here is what you're only going to prove that you don't believe in what you really know is true. Because why are you going to say no? Adam didn't create it. I heard my brother Sarnetta say, some man did. I asked the brother, well, who was that man? I don't know. And that's what you non-believers keep doing. When you can't answer something, you refuse to believe what the scriptures say and what they said. You know somebody named them. You know you didn't put the sun there. You know you didn't put the moon there. You know you didn't put the stars there. But you know the moon, sun, moon, and stars are not eternal as well. So who did it? You just choose to believe it wasn't God. You know somebody, something put the stars there. But because you don't want to believe it's God, you just laugh at we don't know, or you believe some scientific theory about a big bang that nobody was there to see. That first element that sparked the universe and created this intelligent universe. Yeah, freaking right. But some of the things that scientists and people that subscribe to that type of stuff believe makes you crazier than what you call us Bible and God believers because you believe in an element appeared out of nowhere. I want to know who put the element there. Let's go on. No matter how much you hate on the Bible, no matter how much you deny it, and this is why y'all really mad. This is why y'all really upset, because y'all claim the people are deceived. What y'all really are mad about is that garbage that you try to present to them, they don't believe it. The masses don't believe that. And you're sitting here wondering why. Why are they believing this European Bible? Why are they believing this imaginary God? Why ain't they? If Kim is so doggone real, and if God in the Bible is so doggone fake, we ain't all that dumb. That's why y'all upset. Talk about the Bible. Claim it got contradictions. The one thing you're going to learn before you die, the Bible will still live. And when you die, the Bible will still be here. Man will still be confessing and praising God. No matter how dumb you tell us you, we are for believing it, for reading it, for claiming it, the fact of the matter is you can't get with it. And Kim, it ain't strong enough to kill it. Because you can't kill what God has ordained. You got historians, let's talk some real stuff. You got historians, I ain't talking about somebody that was born in 1960. I ain't talking about somebody that was born in 1980. I ain't talking about some of the people, no offense, that's in the chat that was born in 2000. I ain't talking about nobody that was born in 1800. I'm talking about you got historians a century after when they say Jesus died or when he lived. Claiming him, writing about him, talking about him. And here's the thing to understand, believers and non-believers. You don't just got historians that were believers in Christ. You got historians that don't believe that Christ is God, that don't believe, that still claim his existence. So these historians wrote about him a century after his life. This is way before the European slave trade. This is way before the United States of America. So we, Jesus don't start with the Christian Bible. Jesus starts way back before you get the King James Version. But y'all don't want to deal with that. The Council of Nicaea, the Council of Nicaea wasn't there to decide if Jesus is real. And Dr. Ma'at, when I was talking to her, even agreed with this. The Council of Nicaea did not come together to create Jesus. The Council of Nicaea came together to proclaim that he was not just a man, but also the son of God. They weren't coming to decide. He did. Jesus didn't get created at the Council of Nicaea. He got confirmed. Get your facts straight. Now, here was what, here was what y'all do when y'all play with the Bible. My brother, who I love with my heart, because he's a good man, and he allowed me a chance on his platform to proclaim the name of Jesus in the true word of God. But here is what he does. He brings out scriptures about God to make God a liar to make God a thief, to make God a murderer, to make God an evil. And then he brings God into the court of law. But who in the court of law will allow incomplete evidence? Who will have a book in their hand and read 10 scriptures out of a book that got thousands of them and proclaim God to be a liar? Who would you trust to tell you a story when they don't even read the whole story? 
Who would you trust? Because anybody who is listening to this, if the police took you down to the precinct and arrested you, and you said, what did I do? And they told a half truth or a half story, everybody would go get their lawyer. If you had to sit in the courtroom and listen to them say, he said this and say that, and then say, but play the whole tape. So you can catch the parts that they said. And so that you can hear the parts that I said after that. Because everybody understands that if you don't tell something in context, you won't have the full story. So it's very easy for my brother Sarnetta or some other people to pull out a scripture. Now, how are you going to have a chapter and a scripture in that chapter that got 30 scriptures and you're going to read verse 29 only and tell me you understand the story? Who do that? Even kids understand to read the whole book and they little children's story. Because how do you know how something ends if you only read how it begins? Or how do you know how it began if you only go to the middle of it and pick out a certain scripture? So Sarnetta brings out scriptures that are evil. They talk about death, they talk about murder, talk about lying spirits. They say, but where's this good God? But you won't read the scriptures that talk about this good God. You read the scriptures that talk about his wrath. But the reason you have a problem with his wrath is because your premise is wrong. Because the Bible does not say God is man. And when you look at God as a man out of your logical eyes, then you're going to see him as we see him, but as we see ourselves. But the truth of the matter is the Bible says that God is sovereign. The Bible says that God does what he wants to do. And if you don't see God as a sovereign God, the God who created you and you not creating him, if you don't permit God to have wrath, then you just let, and you just going to let unrighteousness go unpunished, then you look at God as evil. But here is the thing that I understand. We all, even in this earth, understand that the person who commits a crime has a right to be judged, has a right to be punished. Now we look at God and we want to control how we punish. You ain't God enough to make that call. All right, time. The ball and, huh? Time. Time? Yeah, I got a lot, man. That's like 16 minutes. Sorry, you got to let me get these last scriptures in. <laughs> go ahead, go Five ahead. Five minutes, sorry. Huh? Go ahead, man. Five Damn. minutes and I'll go be ahead. done. Go ahead. Psalms 135 and 6 says, Whatsoever the Lord please, that he did in heaven and earth. You got to read that scripture, that he did in the seas and all the deep places. You got to read that to understand. You can't question God. God says, I do what I want to do. Now, if you got a problem with it, that's you. So what? Your kids sometimes got a problem with what you do. You grown. And you definitely ain't God. Let me just finish this off because I said I only got a little bit of time. Because I forget that Jeremiah 29 says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thought of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. He wants to show you scriptures where he believes God is doing evil. But he doesn't want to show you the scriptures that says God is not thinking of his people to do evil to them. So what Sinetta and others do is they make scriptures compete instead of making them complete. you got to make scriptures complete each other, not compete. Here's something I've seen either Brother Polite do, who is adverse to the scripture. And here I, I, I heard Brother Khalil do. He is adverse to the scriptures. One of the things they do is they go into the Bible and they talk about how God hardened Pharaoh's heart. And I'm going to close with this. They talk about how God hardened Pharaoh's heart and how God caused them. Just so he can destroy him. Not to, that means y'all don't read scripture. Because if you read before he ever hardened Pharaoh's heart, you'll read this. Now let me say this for the people in the back that just don't read a scripture, but read the word of God and truly understand it. And afterwards, Moses and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh, that don't sound like God destroying them. That sounds like people trying to talk things out. And they're always talking about God and slavery and why didn't God get him out of slavery? Then when God go get him out of slavery, you got a problem about how God did it. Now, everybody, if y'all be honest, y'all hear people talking about, well, why ain't God get him out of slavery? And now when God goes to get his people out of slavery, y'all mad at the man that was holding him in slavery, how God sought to destroy him. Get out of here. Y'all just showing y'all don't believe in God, but y'all are biased judge. Y'all can't judge God, y'all are biased. Thus said the Lord God of Israel, let my people go. That's what God told Moses to say. God wasn't trying to destroy Pharaoh. He wasn't trying to harden his heart. He told him, let my people go. But let's look what Pharaoh said when they went and talked to Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said, who is this Lord? This is the part Sarnetta ain't going to read. This is the part Polite ain't going to read. This is before God hardened his heart. And Pharaoh said, who is the Lord that I should obey his voice to let Israel go? I, not, I know not the Lord. Neither will I let Israel go. And they said, the God of the Hebrews have met with us. Let us go. We pray thee. They begged him. Let us go, man. 
Let us go so God don't got to get you. Let our people go. Three days journey into the desert and sacrifice unto the Lord our God. Lest he fall upon us with pestilence of the sword. And the king of Egypt, Pharaoh, said unto them, Wherefore do you, Moses and Aaron, talk to me about letting your people go? Now he says, go get to work. you keeping them from doing their work. And then Pharaoh was so mad. See, y'all want to talk about God being evil. No, God is just. Y'all don't want to read the whole Bible because what's happening before God hardened his heart. And this is where I want y'all to listen to that trickery that Sinetta, Polite, and all them other people be pulling. They are really the ones deceiving y'all and pulling the seed over your eyes. Because the fact of the matter is they say, look at God, look at them doing And they forget to tell you that Pharaoh was killing people. That Pharaoh was enslaving people. That Pharaoh actually, because they said, let them go. That's all they did. They said, let us go, man. Let us go into our own thing. Let us go into our own land. Pharaoh said, but since y'all asked me that, just read it in the scripture, y'all. Since y'all asked me that, I don't want y'all to give them the brick anymore that they're making these houses with. I don't want you to give them mortar anymore that they're making this stuff with. I want you to give them straw for bricks. And since we're giving them straw and they can't do what they need to do, now we're going to beat them. We're going to make their work harder, and then we're going to beat them. That's not me making up something. You don't got to believe in the scriptures if, if you don't want to, but at least read it accurately. Don't say God um, hardened his heart. Make sure you say Pharaoh's heart was already hardened. Make sure you say that Moses had to ask and ask and ask, and Pharaoh said, as I just read it, I will not let them go. They misinterpret scripture. They say God created evil. God created everything. But he did not create evil for you to use. God by default created evil because he's good. God by default created darkness because he's light. Anything that is has to have an opposite of it. Just because he is the truth, what is the opposite of truth? A lie. But do you, just because lying is exists, just because you can commit evil doesn't mean God told you to commit it. So they trick y'all when they show you over in Genesis chapter 3 when they say the devil told the truth to Adam and Eve. No, he lied. And what we never want to deal with is God actually told Adam and Eve he created them without the knowledge of evil. That's why he said, don't eat this knowledge. Don't eat from good and evil because you can't handle it. And all humanity has proven is that we can't handle good or evil. Now, let's just leave it at this, Sinetta. Y'all don't believe God exists, so how are you going to try him? Y'all think God is an uh, image of our imagination. So how are you going to try him? But now, since you don't think God is real, and since you don't think the scriptures is real, and since I got to close our toes on this, since God ain't real and the Bible is faith, then bring them timid boys, bring them timid believers, bring them timid scriptures, bring that timid God and goddesses to the table. Because if they are the ancient world, if they are the first civilization, then they are the ones that now, if they're real, they have to give an answer. Why is there murder? Why is there lies? Why is there evil? Why is there darkness? Now them Kimmich boys got to come and answer them questions. Now it's time for us to interrogate Kimmich because y'all don't believe God is real. Y'all don't believe in the Bible. So let's talk about, let's talk to the people that y'all believe is real. Let's talk about the people and the passages that y'all believe is real. And let's let them explain all this mess that's going on because the fact of the matter is that even if you try to remove God, you still got to deal with the hell of this world. I would simply suggest to you that you deal with it with your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Time, body bag. All right, that's uh, Reverend Pastor Bennett and powerful, powerful closing. I just wanted to let the brother get it all out so he wouldn't say that I did not give him the opportunity to close out for those who um, you already see that he is representing God to the fullest. Even though he had perjured himself early on, I still have not charged him with any perjury right now. I gave him a break to let him go on. Before I bring on the prosecutor, Who's going to close this out? I won. I told y'all earlier I wanted Garfield to talk about what he was going to say, but it didn't come out on the tape. So we'll let Garfield say what he got to say real quick. Yeah, right. And yeah, then we'll bring out the closure. All right. Peace and black power. Brother Garfield, I bring to you the stand, my brother, to um say what you was going to say earlier. You got the floor, my brother. Hey, peace and love, man. And to what the pastor just said, by the way, the reason why there is evil is because of what your God has given us. He gave us the evil, and he actually is the one that 
allows it to happen. But anyway, let's get into this for a second. Have you ever noticed the Bible is built on good, I mean, on God and the devil? Good versus evil. Why is there no plan in the Bible to kill Satan? Mm, good point. Now, if you look at this, why don't God just kill the devil? Then he comes out and says, okay, how can God create man and then punish them for doing something he knew they would do? The same thing you talked about the whole night about omniscient and omnipresent. So he's going to kill you. He's going to create man knowing that he was going to disobey him 15, 2,000 years later, but punish him for it anyway. That sounds like a schizophrenic God to me. I'm going to give him that name. He's Beautiful not schizophrenic point, to anybody man. else. Beautiful point. Now, let's look at this family. Do you notice that the God of the Bible treats the people that are not chosen better than the people that are chosen? The people who are not chosen have less wars, less plagues, less disasters. You know, that's just the God of the Bible. But let me get into this, by the way. Now, I noticed something that happened when we talked about God and the devil and all that stuff, there was a story in the Bible, Sonetta, that caught my eye. It was a story in Job where God had, a, had basically a bet with Satan and killed Job's children because pretty much Job lost. Job made God lose the bet. So God killed Job's children. Let's go to Job 1 for a second. What? So the story, yeah, bro. Let's look at this. Let's look at it. This is the God that Pastor Bennett is talking about. So that means God is betting on Pastor Williams' life right now. So he has a bet with Satan. Instead of God just getting up and say, hey, hey, Satan, um, and just kill him, he's going to sit down with Satan and bet about Job and how good Job is. Let's look at the story for a minute. Job was a perfect man with seven sons, three daughters, 7,000 sheep, you know, and all this different stuff, right? He was the greatest man east of the Mediterranean. There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. And that man was perfect and upright and one that feared God and eschewed evil. All right, so that's Job 1, 1 to 3. So Job's sons liked to party a lot. And they often invited their sisters over to party with them. And his sons went and feasted in their houses. Everyone his day and sent and called for their three sisters to eat and to drink with them. Job 1, 4. So Job was worried that his sons might sin while they were partying. So Job spent all his time killing animals for God in order to sanctify his sons. So one day, the sons of God came over to God's place, and Satan was with them. Listen to this carefully, ladies and gentlemen. Job 1, 6. One day, the sons of God came over to God's place, and Satan was with them. So God had a place. That's a whole other argument for another time. Now, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came along, came also among with them. God ignored his other sons, but was especially interested in Satan. He hadn't seen him for a while and wanted to know what he'd been up to lately. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence camest thou? Satan said, then Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. So, so anyway, the Lord said, okay, you have this guy that is perfect, upright, God-fearing and whatnot. And the Lord said unto Satan, has thou considered my servant Job that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil? Job 1.8. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Dost Job, fear God for naught. Has not thou made an hedge against him? You know what a hedge is, ladies and gentlemen? We talk about a hedge, you talk about a stock market, making a bet. So the word is actually in the biblical text. I'm not making this up. Has not thou made an hedge about him and about his house and about all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands and his substance in his priest in the land. So anyway, ladies and gentlemen, to make a long story short, so God said, um, but put forth thine hand now and touch all that he has, and he will curse thee to thy face. So basically, this is what happened, ladies and gentlemen. Job basically failed God. He basically failed. A messenger came to tell Job that the Sabian has taken his oxen and axe and killed all his slaves. And then while he was still talking to, to the first messenger, another messenger showed up 
telling him that a fire from God had fallen from heaven and burned up his sheep and all this different stuff. And then while the second messenger was there, a third messenger came, arrived to tell Job that a wind came up and knocked down the house, that his children were partying and killed them all. So because of this bet and Job losing the bet, God killed his children. Why mm. didn't God just Brother, do you have any receipts on that? Can the people go yeah, and check Job this out? One, Job 1, verses 1 to well, one to 22. There so you again, have it, family. It's right there so, for so, you. So, so family and friends, listen, man, and even, even with um, Ezekiel and his wife. Did you get into that, brother? No, go ahead. Yeah, Ezekiel, um, God killed Ezekiel's wife just to make an example out of his wife and told him not to mourn. What? Imagine, imagine son at a plotting with this God, or you, you Pastor Bennett, or any idiot believer that's in the chat right now. You and God is going to plan to kill your wife and then tell you you can't mourn over her. What type of God is that? What type of God is that? This is, listen, family, listen. There's no way somebody's going to, Tease Sarnetta or Garfield. I got a bald head right now. Tease me. And I'm going to make my God kill 42 kids because somebody teased me about my bald head. That don't make no sense. You kill 50,000 people because they looked into the ark of the Lord. That don't make no sense. It, it, it's not making no sense. Killing a man because he ain't want to ejaculate in, in a damn woman. Come on, bro. Come on. There's ways to go about things, but this God is not making no sense to me. I say to you guys, this God is guilty of treason, guilty of murder, guilty of every single thing. Now, hold on, Garfield. Children, Garfield. children. Yeah. You are saying that God killed Ezekiel's wife and told Ezekiel that he don't want him to have any feelings over this. He don't want yes, him sir. to have no remorseful over this. Just kill. I'm going to kill your wife and you just be all right with like everything is good. Is that what yes. you're saying? Yes, my brother. You can go to Ezekiel 24 between 15 and 18. It talks about it, but you can read the whole of chapter 24 up to verse 16. Okay. And you'll see that he kills his wife and tells him not to mourn her death. In fact, look at verse 16. My wife died and I did in the morning as I was commanded. Yes. And what he was commanded to do, not mourn. You Let can't me see mourn if I can find that. On. Let me see if I can find that. As you're talking about it, go ahead. Yep. When yet neither shalt thou mourn nor weep, neither shall thy tears run down for beer to cry, make no mourning for the dead, bind the tie of thine head upon thee, and put on thy shoes upon thy feet, and cover not thy lips, and eat not the bread of men. Imagine you right now in ISU PK, you're married, and God says, we're going to kill your wife. Just to tell people, whenever somebody dies, don't mourn. You're an example. What was the reason? Was she a whore? Was she a mm. prostitute? Did she kill somebody? Did she cheat on him? She did, what did she do, family? She didn't do anything. And look what happened. God killed her to prove a point. Don't mourn over death. This is ridiculous. You can't believe this is actually true. There's no way. Yeah, in no the Bible, I, I mean, it's on the screen. I got it on the screen. And I know that the people will find God guilty when, when this goes to the juror. You know, so we're going to find out. I hope Pastor Bennett's um, closing argument can get God off, but I don't think so because this is the smartest chat room on YouTube and our people are not gullible to fall for the same trick over and over again. I got it on the screen, Ezekiel 24, 15, and 18, where they can go and read it for themselves. And, yeah. and Garfield, to add on that, did you also know Garfield? that God was getting ready to kill Moses. He was setting Moses' ass up, telling Moses to come meet me, and he was getting ready to kill Moses. Did you know that? Mm -mm -mm. Did you yes, know that, yes, Garfield? Yes, 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 I'm familiar with it. Uh, let I'm me put that on the screen. In the book of I, Exodus I, 4, 24, and 26. And mm -mm -mm. who saved Moses was, I think it was his wife. And God was going to kill him all because of the circumcision, all because his son was not circumcised or something like that. So y'all can read it for yourself in the book of Exodus 4, 24 and 26. You see? So y'all got to go and check that out. And it came to pass, by the way, in, in the end that the Lord met him. See, God met Moses, right? 
and sought to kill him. Kill who? Kill Moses. Then Sapphira took the sharp stone and cut off the foreskin of her son and cast it to his feet and said, Surely a bloody husband art thou to me. Meaning, yo, don't kill my husband. A bloody husband can't do nothing to me. I don't need no bloody husband. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So this shit is crazy. God is a vicious goddamn killer. God is a damn killer, man. Go ahead. Yes. All he got to do is just kill Satan and all of this is over. Right. Facts. Yes. Just kill Satan and it's over. Why don't you just do that? If Satan, why is Satan having a meeting with God in the first place? Why but you know what, Garfield? I don't think that that would be it. Do you know why? Because if you kill Satan, it still won't be over because God created evil. So what God got to do is abolish the evil and create peace, love, and happiness. And everybody would be walking around happy, peaceful, put the spirit of love over everybody. Ain't nobody shooting nobody no more. There's love. There's peace going on. We will just die of, hey, of you know, old you know, age. You know we will die of, 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 of old age and stuff like that. But so, you know what, though? Yes, go what ahead. Is, what, is, what is Bugs Bunny without Elmer Ford? Hey. Same, this is, it's, like, it's a cartoon issue. What is Elmer Ford without Bugs Bunny? Hey. So you can't, you got to keep the cartoon shit going. So you need Satan to keep everything going. So Satan okay. will always exist. <laughs> so before Satan, I let you no go, God. Garfield, before yes, I let sir. you go. Yes, sir. You put something out that God was running around with gang tattoos on his body. Can you mm -hmm. explain that for the people before I get to the closing of the other brother where we close this out with the closing arguments of um of the prosecutor what yeah, is this thing right. about god tattooing himself yeah well basically revelation 1916 is preceded by revelation 19 well, let me go it and says, look this up it says, yeah. it says he has eyes like blazing fire and many royal crowns on his head he has a name written on him that only he himself knows so in 1912 it's giving us a hint before we even reach the 16. So he has a name on him that only he himself knows because wherever it's written, it's hid, it's at a hidden spot. So we already got a hint in 12. So he said he has a name written on his robe and on his thigh, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Okay, so let's take a look at this. There's a book called um, Euphemia. There's a book called Euphemia, um, what is it called? Euphemia. Let me get the right name for you guys. So you guys, Euphemia by Ralph Keyes, our love affair with euphemisms. And what it says is a biblical euphemism for testicles was thigh, as when a dying Jacob said to Joseph in Genesis 2, but put I pray thee thy hand under my thigh, bury me not in Egypt. So we see they use the word, they used to word, use the word stones at one time in the Bible in, for, for, for testicles, just like in Job 40, 17 and in Le Leviticus 21, 20. So what we do is they, they used to have different terminologies they use as euphemisms. So a euphemism for testicles is thigh throughout the Bible. You see the word thigh, they're referring to men genitalia so they're referring to the penis or to the um to the scrotum or to the to the, what we call the balls all right mm. so so that's what happened with that so what we look at when we look at it now family what we see is that um, um revelation 19 16 talks about jesus having king of kings literally hidden we see it in 1912 and then in 1916 it talks about writing on the testicles the kings of kings and lord of lords. It was written on his robe and also on his testicles. All right, man. Thank you for this information. I got it on the screen, Revelations 19 and 16. So we can see, we can uh, put this in the record, that order in the court family, I know y'all going crazy right now. Y'all don't agree with this. Order. Order. Order in the court. Order in the damn court. It's getting crazy right now. Thank you, Godfather. I got to let you go. I got to see what's going on in this courtroom because the people is getting crazy. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you. Uh, no problem. Peace and love. All right. Love. Peace All and right. love, man. All right, family. So we can see now God is um, God right-hand man, Jesus. 
is playing with tattoo, gang signs, king of kings. What is this all about? Lord of lords. So he's letting you know that he is the um the crown chief and the priest. And um, hey, order, family, please. Order. Order. Enough, man. We don't need you crying and screaming in the court. Please calm him down in the back, please. Order in the court. I mean, hey, this is what he is doing. So we're going to find, right now, we're going to come with Khalil Amani, and he's going to take us home and close this out. We heard past the Bennett closure, and now we got to hear Khalil Amani's. Closer, the prosecutor. Pay attention. This shit is powerful. Most honorable Sanetta. Black News 102 and Sanetta TV. May I approach the jury? Thank you. My name is Khalil Amani. And I've sat back for many years and listen to these religious folks talk about God. May I have your attention for a few short minutes as I give my closing statements about God being on trial. The whole world is looking for salvation. The secular world is looking for secular ideals for salvation. There is even talk of a one world government and a new world order. Democracy has failed us in one way or another to truly unite the human family as one. More and more, people are turning to religion for the answer to their existence. There is everywhere disillusionment with our governments and our religions. The answers to our problems must come from the divine. This is how some of us are thinking. Whether we be Jew, Hebrew, Israelite, Christian, or Muslim. Our salvation is dependent on the messianic ideal of a human leader, of a divine nature to rescue us from ourselves. Most of us, for most of us, we have accepted as truth that a divine leader will make his appearance on this earth to bring righteousness and perfection. This, my friends, is the messianic Idea. I think we can all agree that we need some type of redeeming. The last four centuries have put to death more people in the name of religion and God than the world has ever seen. Religion has led to the worst pogroms the world has ever seen. Yet it is religion and a religious figure that we look to for this utopian thing called salvation and heaven. The Jew is awaiting the final arrival of the Messiah to restore Israel as the head of all nations. The Christian is awaiting the final arrival of Jesus Christ to save us from our sins. The Muslim is awaiting for the final arrival of the last Mahdi to make his appearance and to bring Islam to all the world. The messianic ideal in full effect. But I question the messianic ideal. Is it a historical and religious hoax that has been perpetrated upon us? Is it our need to believe that a higher power is controlling our destiny and will recompense those that rot evil? And why does God need to send someone to straighten out his, her, or its creation? Can't he or she just say, let there be, and it is done? Where has God been doing the worst crimes against humanity? Is God on vacation? The last great miracle that God supposedly performed was some 2,000 years ago in resurrecting his son from the dead. Since then, he's either been incognito, on vacation, in deep thought, or just plain old out to lunch. 
Americans from the pogroms. Excuse me. Where was God? And why didn't he send the Messiah to deliver the Native Americans from the pogroms being waged against them by the Europeans? Millions and millions died. Where was he? Where was this God of the Bible? I want to know where the hell he was. Where was God and why didn't he send the Messiah to rescue the African from the pogrom being waged against him by the European? If ever there were a people who needed a Messiah to save them, it was the Native American and the African. Don't tell me about what he did in Egypt. That was a small thing. Their burdens didn't compare with the plight of the African and the Native American. They, were, they weren't annihilated. The Egyptians did not annihilate the Hebrews. They weren't looked upon as an inferior people and treated less than human. Their servitude wasn't based on racial superiority slash inferiority. The Hebrews were never stripped of culture, language, land, religion, nationality, heritage, or family. No! The ancient Hebrews were just one of many groups that were subservient to the Egyptians. So they say. And if I gotta get personal, there is even doubt that the Jews were ever in bondage in Egypt. Certainly. There is no archaeological evidence to support the Bible's claim of a Messiah named Moses delivering the children of Israel out of the hands of the Egyptians. For all we know, the story has about as much validity as Aesop's fables. Maybe that's why the African and the Indian never received a Messiah. Maybe the, Masen maybe the Messianic ideal is a wonderful tale to Keep hope alive, as Jesse Jackson would say. The Messianic ideal won't, us, won't allow us to consider what we hold so sacred, our beliefs. To question the Messianic ideal is to question our salvation, which is to question our beliefs. We will, sm we will swear on our mother's graves that salvation is only in Jesus. We will kill you if you defame Prophet Muhammad. Why such convictions? Because we have been duped into believing that our religion is the, that our religion is the right one and all others have erred. I say we have been duped into believing that our religion is the right one and all others have erred. But there is a simple answer to this lunacy. An answer so simple that it's hard to understand why we all don't see it. Here it is, jury. Our religious beliefs are predicated on the geographical location of our upbringing. Every American Christian in America is Christian because he or she was born in a country where Christianity is the unofficial state religion. That's why we believe so strongly in what we've been taught. What else can we believe when we have not known any other religion? Duh. Listen up, jury. Every Muslim in Iraq and Iran is Muslim because he or she was brought up under that religion and made to believe that it is the truth. What else can they believe in besides that which is a part of the state religion and the religion of their mothers and fathers? Duh. Every Hindu or Buddhist in the Orient, in the Orient, subscribes to the, that religion because it is the religion of the Asian. What else can they believe in? The religious historian 
Dr. Yosef Ben Yakanan sums it up best when he wrote, Religion is the deification of a people's culture. I said, Dr. Yosef Ben Yakanan said that religion is the deification of a people's culture. We deify, we make God of that which we believe to be our ultimate reality. But jury, maybe, I said maybe God was that little baby suckling the breasts of his mother in Bethlehem. Maybe. Maybe God is the wino on the corner of 125th Street and Lenox Avenue in Harlem or the crackhead on Crenshaw in Los Angeles. Maybe I'm God. Maybe there is no God. Maybe there is no God slash Messiah to save us. Maybe. Just maybe. We'll figure it out before we kill ourselves off the planet. Maybe. In closing, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, in closing, your honorable Sonetta, I would like to close by saying, what can be extrapolated by the God of the Bible? What concrete conclusions can we make about the God of the Bible? For starters, we can classify him as just another trickster god in the pantheon of gods who has used his creation, the human family, as pawns in a warped game of heavenly chess. From the beginning, the God of the Bible allowed Satan, the devil, that old serpent to run roughshod over humanity. I said, from the beginning, the God of the Bible allowed Satan, the devil, that old serpent, to run roughshod over humanity. From allowing the devil to mentally harass Eve in the garden until she would finally succumb to his desires, to allowing the devil to run to and fro and up and down in the earth, and ruin a righteous man like Job just to prove a non-point about a man's faith to allowing the devil to take Jesus up on a high mountain and tempt him. This, my friends, is the God of the Bible. This trickster God of the Bible, so devious by nature that he would allow his people the Jews, the Israelites, the Hebrews, to be in bondage for 400 years to the Egyptians. According to the myth, that is. And when it was time for freedom, instead of freeing his people, this trickster God of the Bible continued his warped game of who has the bigger phallus, him or the Egyptians. And instead of freeing his people, Harden Pharaoh's heart against the children of Israel so that he would not free his people. He did this after 400 years of captivity. It is clear that the Bible turns out to be no more than the mythological tales of the ancient Israelites. It was never on the sixth day God created man? No! It was on the sixth day man created God. Indeed, the God of the Bible is man-made, created with all the attributes of mere mortals, a God who is constantly in his feelings. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, this God, who claims to be good, yet he is terrible, says the Bible, Deuteronomy 721, Deuteronomy 
10.17. He calls himself terrible. A God who stoops down to the weak emotion of human jealousy. A God who creates, or excuse me, a God who cries like a woman who travails, like a woman in labor. A God who carries on a homoerotic relationship with the men of Israel while, re while relegating women to second class citizenry. This is the God of the Bible, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, the Bible is full of fanciful tales in times past where he made the sun stand still, where God, where a man made to live in the belly of a great fish, a man who can walk on water. Yeah, 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 yeah. We heard, we read all of that. But as Janet Jackson would say, what have you done for me lately, God? In the last thousand years of human existence, Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the God of the Bible has been incognito, or as we say in the hood, incognito. Where has God been doing the worst crimes committed against people in the annals of human history? Where was God when the indigenous populations in the Western Hemisphere were being annihilated? The so-called Indians, the Native Americans. Where was he, goddammit? Talk to me, jury. Why did God allow the extinction of a whole race of people, the Indians? Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, Honorable Sarnetta, when was the last time we saw a family of Native Americans dining at a Red Lobster? I'll wait. The God of the Bible. We're putting God on trial today. Why would this God of the Bible, why would he allow an estimated 10 million to 100 million Africans via the transatlantic slave trade to be brought into bondage here in the Americas, Brazil, and other parts? Why would God allow 400 years of rape, torture, and murder to persist? Where was the God of the Bible? I'll tell you. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the God of the Bible is missing in action. A wall, out to lunch, or dare I say, a figment of the human imagination. The God of the Bible is a loser with a trophy shelf full of L's. And the mythological devil has been winning since the Garden of Eden. All facts. May the jury come to this verdict. May the jury come to its verdict and may the verdict be guilty as charged. We who are right-minded thinking and beyond mythology charge the God of the Bible as being a coward, too afraid to rid the world of the devil. Do I need to say that again, jury? Do you hear me, jury? We who are wide awoke and awake, we charge the God of the Bible as being a coward, too chicken shit, too afraid, too scared to rid the world of the devil, too vain and egotistical to allow humanity to live without the confines and constraints of worshiping him and too emotional to understand the frailty and shortcomings of we humans and our earthly experiences. I submit to the jury that the God of the Bible is too judgmental to be a father to his children. And alas, the God of the Bible 
has been an angry taskmaster who operates out of reward and punishment, who relishes in having people fear him. May the jury find that the God of the Bible is treacherous to humanity and treasonous to his so-called chosen people, the Jews, the Israelites, the Hebrews. For he has, since time immemorial, turned his back on the human family, going so far as to extinguish the whole human family, save eight people on a boat. Talking about he did not like creation, so he killed off the people. Talking about he, it repented him. He repented for having made his creation. What kind of man, what kind of God does not know the outcome of that which he creates? Hmm? The God of the Bible claims to have a special people, a chosen people, a peculiar people, the Jews, Hebrews, Israelites. But I submit to the jury that the God of the Bible, in claiming to have a chosen people, has been divisive, playing favorites, dividing the human family along nationalistic lines. We charge the God of the Bible as being wholly racist, prejudiced, and dealing in fake news. The proof being the Bible and all of its ethnocentric biases, religiocentric and nationalistic mumbo jumbo that has been aimed at every nation, every religion, women, and even gay people. The God of the Bible is a bully who has brainwashed people through fear and intimidation and threats. He threatens inhumanity with eternal damnation in a very hot place that we call hell. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, in conclusion, let the jury find that the God of the Bible stands as the supreme narcissist, an egomaniac who has smoke for humanity, but will never step to the devil over his children. Let me repeat that, ladies and gentlemen. I said the God of the Bible stands as the supreme narcissist, an egomaniac who has smoke, who has fisticuffs, who wants to throw hands for everybody. He has smoke for you and I. He tells us he will kill us and put us in damnation and hellfire for eternity. The God of the Bible has smoke for everybody, for all of us. But he'll never step to the devil over you and I. We who are woke and care not that the God of the Bible bless your mama with a new wig. No, we don't care that your mama got a new wig because she prayed. Why won't he kill the mythical devil so that we can get free? Thank you for listening to me. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I pray that you find the God of the Bible guilty as charged. Thank you. Damn, damn, damn. God has smoke for us and his children and the people he love. But he ain't got no smoke for the devil. I think that says it all. Um, what I would like to say is for me to come back, I don't want to put out a, um, a, a verdict right now, but I will put my email inside. Here's my email. Tomorrow I will come back and do a show same time and let you know how do we find God. There's my email. You, brothers and sisters, are the one that can 
free God, keep him locked in for life, or whatever. It's up to you. You heard the closing of Pastor Bennett, Williams Bennett, and now you heard the closing of our brother Imani, Khalil Imani. And there's my email right there. I will read the verdict tomorrow. I mean, I'm going to keep it fair. I'll show it to you. It's not me saying this. Hit me with the email, guilty or innocent, and we will do a show tomorrow, and I will open up the lines and let people say why they feel he is innocent or guilty. It is up to y'all. Here is my email once again. Thank y'all for listening, brothers and sisters. I'm going to keep the email going so everybody can make sure they get this email. I will be doing the show tomorrow, 7 o'clock, and we're going to get it in. All right? So, family, thank y'all. Thank everybody for tuning in. Peace and black power. Tomorrow, 7 o'clock, I will be reading the verdict. Peace. Black News Presentation.